This is Ghana, one of the best kept secrets in Africa. Today I'm taking you to the southern coast of Ghana, Cape Coast Castle and Elmina Castle, also known as the Slave Castles. We are going to explore the history of a beautiful country with a dark past. 400 years ago, this was a center of the slave trade. Fast forward to today, it's a vibrant destination full of delicious food and a great mix of cultures. We will dive deep into palm wine, shea butter, and fish markets. Are you ready, Ghana? Let's go. For lunch today, we're going to Emma Loca to eat some fufu with some goat and some fish. Right, my man? Yes. And this is it, guys, fufu. First time trying it. So it's basically boiled cassava. Plantain. Plantains. Pounded. Pounded. Okay, that's that, right? That's the middle, like the pasty thing, right? And then after that, they added Basically the, the goat, lasu, lasu, light, light soup, oh light soup, okay light soup and goat. And I think there's fish here as well, right? Yes. So here we have fish, here we have goat, and here we have it. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, ginger as well. Mmm. Oh, that's some potent ginger. That's how we do it, right? Whoa, it is so hot. It's like boiling, guys. You have to eat it this hot? I mean, look at this fish. What is this, tilapia? This is actually tuna. Mm -hmm. Just gotta pull it out. Look at that. It's like a pasty, doughy. Woo. It's hot. So you get some of this tuna, right? Oh, get a piece, mix it with this. Really hot. And then we eat. Mm -hmm. There's this piece of goat. Oh. Oh, so hot. Oh, it's scorching. The easiest thing to eat right now is the tuna. The goat's on fire, but they give you so much goat. Look at this. Mmm, lots of flavor. I love the soup, man. It's like a, it's almost like a oily red soup, similar to like, I wouldn't say a curry because it's more of a soup, right? Oh, but it's so ridiculously hot. I'd say you wait a little bit, right? And right behind us, we hear them pounding, right? Mm -hmm. This is worth it, man. Wow. This is hard. This is too hot. Mm -hmm. We eat fufu with hot soup. Hot soup. Always. 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 Big chunks to go here. Look at that. Hard to break it. Okay, the flesh. Take the pieces of flesh out. Ooh. It's too hot. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Delicious goat. You're in that bone marrow. Oh yeah. My favorite is the tuna. For this one, mmm. Make sure of that. Big piece of tuna. You gotta be careful. There is a little spine right there. Whoa. That here. Mm -hmm. Be careful of the spines, bones. Lots of them in this one. Mm, it's enjoyable though. It's a paste, no? Easy to eat. It's good while enjoying it. You know, the main purpose of this is to fill you up, right? That's so why we have these, you know, cassava, doughs, plantain, always fills your stomach up, gets you really full, you add some protein, and that's it. Goat is ridiculous. I love goat. Goat and lamb. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Look at that. Look at this. <laughs> and you enjoy it. I'm, I'm loving it, man. What do you mean? What is it? Oh, man. That was a lot. Very slimy. Pasty. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if I can eat this every day. It's enjoyable one, two times. Maybe. There are some people who eat every day. Every day they eat this. Every day? Yeah. Wow. And for me, I'd rather go with all the, two, the three fish. Times a week. Two or three yeah. times a week, you? Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's good. It's different. Look at that. <laughs> this is one of the local dishes you have to eat when you come to Ghana. Mm -hmm. The only problem with the goat is how hard it is to get through. That's why the tuna was easy, you know? Just gotta take off the spines. Here, 
goat is difficult. The bone marrow is the best part, though. Mm hmm. Oh, that's the best. Yeah, for me, the marrow is the best part of like oso buco, you know, oxtail and stuff. You stuffing that out? Wow. Mmm, that was good. Oh, this one's full. Cool. This. Oh yeah. Am I doing it the way the Ghanaians do it? Yeah. How do you do it? How do I do it? Dude, I just do it. <laughs> David in Cape Coast at Ema Local, who just finished his fufu with goat light soup. I'm not enjoying mine. All right, guys, that was awesome. It was 86 total for four of those bowls, four big bowls. Driver, guide, our new guide, me, plus some water. So I tipped her an extra 14, it's so roughly 100. So 100 is what, 20 US dollars. We all ate, so five bucks a person, pretty good deal. Rock and roll, dude, let's go. I am so tired. Because of the jet lag, I woke up at four in the morning. My mind is just off. Oh man, what are we gonna eat? Kenke. Oh, we're looking for watch it. Oh, yeah, something traditional. Watch it. Money? Watch it. Yeah. Watch it. Beans and rice. Now we exited all the traffic, all the chaos. We are here on the open road and it is very, very green. Even though it's dry season, it's very lush out here. This is the real Africa, right? For me, it reminds me of like, let's say Malawi. I did a huge road trip in Malawi, 22 days, and everything was like this, but big distances. Same thing here, you know, there's a four hour drive to go to Kumasi, another four hour drive to go to Mola, another eight hour drive, and to come all the way back down, best thing to do is take a flight from Tamale. That's what I'm doing, but you can also drive all the way back down, which is like 15 hours, something like that, right? And yeah, I mean, we're just looking right now for a place to eat. We're gonna probably have some wache or some kenke. Kenke? <laughs> Sorry, hard to say these. <laughs> Maybe some red red, right? Yeah. Yeah? But what do you think? Wache is much more uh, common in the morning. In the morning. Also, if you want tilapia and banku, you can have that in the morning as well, but I'm good with that. I've eaten it twice already. I rather have some wache. That is enough for you? <laughs> no, come on. I mean, it's good, it's good. But sometimes the spice level, ooh, it gets hot. Yeah. Last night, it was hot. Yeah. Yeah, you need to get all the tastes. <laughs> so that you have the blend of Ghanaian dishes. All right, let's do it. We're gonna get some coffee, finally. We look for the... I haven't had coffee in five days, man. Yeah, right here? Yeah. We're gonna also get two egg sandwiches. Two. Egg. Three. Three. Three? Uh, two. One, two. One, uh, one city, 50 pesos. We're gonna get look for a watch, watch it, but instead, this lady's making like egg sandwiches, breakfast egg sandwiches. It's one of my favorite things for breakfast. You know, egg sandwich. She like presses it nice and crispy. Mmm, it's gonna be so good. She also adds some, uh, some peppers as well. Wow, this is good. And this is like in the middle of the street, guys. Right here. It's been a minute since I had a cup of coffee. I need this. Oh yes, wow. She's boiling the water. She's adding a little bit of milk. That's actually condensed milk, right? Oh man, it's gonna be very sweet. All right, I'm gonna try the coffee. Super hot though. Oh, it's good. Mine, no sugar, no milk, straight. Nescafe, right? Instant coffee. Mm. Oh, it's good, bro. It's good. I haven't had coffee in so long, I forgot what it tastes like. <laughs> Joking, guys. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Street food. Breakfast of champions. Got a nice egg sandwich here. What did you add? Some cabbage, some uh, green peppers. Cheers, dude. Yo. Mm. Nice. What? Simple, right? So got some fluffy white toast. In the middle has some eggs, right? Two eggs per, with cabbage and peppers and onions. But it's not uh, too spicy for me. Yeah. I like it when it's really spicy. Is it spice? 
Alright, Brendan, you have any spice? Anything hot? Alright, so we made it spicy now. Ready? A little bit. Little bit? <laughs> no. That was not like yesterday. No. Yesterday in the market, at a chili that almost killed me. My face turned red, my eyes were dripping. But I was not expecting you to, you know, just chew it like that. At one go. I mean, I just love spice, right? You like spice? You eat anything. <laughs> Great way to start the day, man. Mm. Nice, simple. You said 150 for this? Uh, the egg. The bread, also one chili. So it's basically three chili for the egg, one chili for the bread. That's three chili, 50 pesos. Plus a coffee? Plus a coffee. So roughly like coffee one dollar. Yeah, something like that. One US dollar yeah. per person here to eat. This is an experience, huh? Eating on the side of the road on the way to Cape Coast. I couldn't wait anymore. It was like 9.30 in the morning, I was like, dude, I need to eat now. <laughs> I know if you wait too long in Accra, the traffic is going to be more serious. Because today, it's Saturday, most of people in Accra, uh -huh. they are going to their various villages for funeral. Oh, so they're all leaving too? They're all leaving. Wow. Some will come back this afternoon, some will return tomorrow, Sunday uh, evening. Okay. Wow. Mm. Damn, I'm boiling out here. It is hot in Ghana. Well, this is your winter. You know, it's what not only that it's hot, but the humidity is very high. Mm -hmm. And so you sweat, you sweat a lot. Yeah, I'm from Miami, so I'm used to this, you know? You always have super high humidity. I'm just not used to being outside all day, you know, with the humidity. I'm gonna eat one of these dishes, you see? Mm-hmm. Filling meal. Easy, affordable. Simple. Simple. Yeah. That's all I really want, you know? Yeah. For me, I'm not very picky. Obviously clean. This is clean. Everything there is clean. The, the coffee obviously is clean. I'm a little I'm a little iffy with the cup, but <laughs> whatever. I take Pepto every day. Yeah, in Ghana, not many people uh, drink coffee. I've noticed. The Francophone countries uh, take much more coffee. Okay. Yeah, so, so this is not a yeah, big coffee and, But I understand. In Ghana, we have coffee. So, chocolate, milo. Exactly. It's our favorite. Yeah, so they have cacao. They don't have coffee beans. That's why you guys are more into yeah. chocolate, right? All right. So we still have a few hours to go. Woo! Baking out here. So my friend, how much are you? 24? 24. 24? Yeah. I think she's charging me extra for the filming. Uh, <laughs> 24, so I'm just gonna give her 25, give her one extra. All right, so that's basically, what, five bucks. That's one thing that'll happen here in Ghana is that, you know, if you're filming, taking photos, they're gonna ask for money, obviously. You know, if you feel comfortable, tip, but you can't be tipping everybody because then you go broke, straight up. I mean, every single person's asking for money. Obviously, I'm paying for the food. I give her a little extra tip for letting me film. That's sort of how it works here. You know, sitting down there, me and Isaac were like boiling. The heat, even though it's overcast, I mean, it's muggy, it's humid, super hot. Once you got in the car, you know, the wind is hitting us. It feels so good, plus a lot of water. And if you run out of water, don't worry. There's always somebody selling water on the roads. Whenever you come to like a, you know, a red light or a stop sign, there's always people selling water, selling snacks. That's the best part about the road, right? People selling everything. Friends of mine, family, they won't do this. They won't eat on the streets every day, all day. But unfortunately, on the road, there aren't that many options except rest stop restaurants that open around 11, always for lunch, right? So if you're doing an early road trip, I suggest bringing like a packed breakfast or buying like how we did it there. You can also take that to go, right? Get the sandwich, put it, take it in the car and keep going. You don't have to like stop and eat it's literally on the road like we did. But yeah, sort of how it is here. Pretty good though. I enjoyed it. I'm down to eat every day, everywhere, man. Give me food and I'll eat. On Accra Cape Coast Highway, uh, please take a rest for five minutes and enjoy the fresh coconuts. Yeah? Yeah. 
Let's do it. So man, how you doing? All right, let's get a coconut. So yes, um, this is my fresh coconuts. Uh, it's very good in the morning. Thank you, my friend. Okay. And it helps fight malaria fever. Yeah, helps fight yeah. malaria fever? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm. Mm. No, I can drink like 10 of these, man. Refreshing. Wow. And if you want, he'll cut it open for you. He'll give you the tender coconut, right? I know. I'm going to cut it into two. Delicious, huh? Shows that he has really enjoyed the coconuts. <laughs> so he just cut up my coconut, right? And then he gives you, you know, they cut a piece of this, right? A piece of the coconut, and that's to use as a spoon. So you just go in, get this, get the flesh, the tenderness, right? Mm-hmm. This is so good. Oh yeah, right there. Mmm. So this is the fair part is this man. Tender coconut. Mmm, so like creamy. Wow. Everywhere I go in the world, I find coconuts. India, Miami, Brazil. It's like non-stop. So you get all that, put it on a spoon, just like this. So you'll find kids like this setting coconuts throughout the whole road. But at this point, you'll see like, like one, two, three, I see four different stands already. Mm-hmm. Mmm. So good for you, right? And you said it fights malaria, huh? We do eat. This part of the coconut as well. Oh yeah? It's a medicine. Actually, it's also good for those who are having um, diabetes, those who are having uh, uh, heart problems. It's up. I agree. You said it's two per, right? So six for three, so roughly a dollar and 20 cents for three coconuts. He'll cut it for you, you drink it, he'll cut it open so you can eat the inside. Amazing, my friends. Hey, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go. All right, guys, I gotta show you this. This is crazy exotic street food here in Ghana. This is like a rodent on a stick. It's bush meat, basically. These are hunters. They go out, they catch rodents. This looks like a big rat or like a guinea pig, similar. Most of the animals you see here are hunted mainly in the night. Sometimes they use the dog, sometimes they set traps in the bush, and sometimes also they go in the night or daytime with gun. And when they bring these animals here, they first try to sell them uh, fresh. And if at the close of the day they are not able to sell all, then they smoke it and again sell it to uh, the, the people passing by. I personally wouldn't eat this. This is bush meat, right? Obviously people here see it as delicacy. I wouldn't do it. Uh, it's just way too exotic for me. You know, this is like a, a big rodent. So you, what's it called, the grass? Grass cutter. Grass cutter? It's of the porcupine uh, family. Oh yeah, I mean, it re resembles porcupine, right? Very spiky, very spiny, long tail. Look at that, hanging by his feet. So this is where the dog bit him, right? Right there. And this one, I don't know where the, how they caught him, but I guess with a trap, right? And that's it. So you can buy it like that, yeah. smoked, smoked, and you just take pieces and eat. When you buy it roasted like this, you take it home and you can make your soup out of the meat, yeah, the smoked meat. So these are the grass cutters, smoked, right? So they defer it, right? Or take off the, I guess it's like a, almost like a porcupine, right? It's very spiny. And look at that, take out the organs, they smoke it, and you can eat it. Looks pretty delicious. Looks like a huge guinea pig, but it's a rodent. Look at that. Whoa. This is wild. Crazy. Now this is the fun part. Trying to cross the street. So many people. So many cars, man. Here we go, here we go. Woo! Exotic street food in Ghana. You've seen it, now you know. Would you eat that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you and eat now it? we're full food. Yeah. No way. And we're going to have it on our trip, huh? Yeah? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these grass cutters or uh, small antelopes or squirrels, uh, rabbits that you see along the highway from Accra going to Cape Coast are hunted from the farms and not from the reserves or the parks. 
Yeah, so they're all coming from their farms, right? Their area. They're not coming from parks. People get confused about that. They think that they're poaching. They're actually not poaching. They're hunters, right? They have to make a living. They're eating that as well. So, you know, if they go hungry, they have their own food, right? And this is another intersection, junction, town, market. It is Mankasim. It's what? It's Mankasim, okay. the big town of the Fanti. Oh yeah? Yeah. Mankasim. Mankasim. And here you see them selling bread. They got squid. They come up to you with, you know, the box in the head and they have like bread and the, the fried squid, right? So it's a mix. And they also have something else here. You said uh, the kenke? They sell kenke, but this kenke, it's uh, referred to the tribe, so we call it Fanti, Fanti Kenki. Fanti Kenki. Fanti Kenki. And what's the difference? The difference is that they wrap this one in the banana leaves. Oh, okay. And so it can last for more than two weeks. Wrapping in the banana leaf gives it more flavor too. So, we've been stuck here for like 10 minutes. What's happening here, dude? We gotta, we gotta push everybody. We have the big car, let's move. <laughs> We are at Abanze now, and Abanze has fought Amsterdam. Initially built by the British and named Fort York. And during the Anglo-Dutch uh, Anglo War of 1640s, the Dutch were able to capture it and they renamed it Amsterdam. That's behind you, right? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately it's like off to the left. It's almost like ruins though, right? Uh, so we're getting close to Cape, Cape Coast. We're like right there. In about uh, half an hour, so we'll get there. So the drive is a four hour drive, but if you do multiple, multiple stops like we did, it'll take five to six hours. For us, it's almost been six hours. So the four hours almost doubles. But it's okay, it's worth it. It's the experience that counts, right? And right here, as you can see, many vendors selling Fanti Keke. So it's their type of Keke with, you know, it's wrapped with banana leaf. And behind me, we have Cape Coast Castle, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Here today, we're gonna explore, we're gonna eat, we're gonna see the market. Okay guys, let's go explore Cape Coast. First stop, the castle. I'm in. Welcome to Cape Coast, formerly called Cabo Corso, according to Portuguese, uh, which means short Cape. It was the English who changed it to mean Cape Coast. And all these are World Heritage Facility, according to UNESCO in 1979. Here in Cape Coast, we have two separate forts protecting the Cape Coast Castle. One we call Fort Victoria, and then the other one is Fort William. All right guys, so we just got off the car in the middle of Cape Coast town. Instead of going straight to the castle, we decided to get off and walk around and see the market area. From here, we're gonna walk to the fishing village area, which, you know, basically is just where the fishermen are with their boats on the beach. And then from there, we'll get to the castle. So this is like a mini market, right? So you have the fish vendors over here. Yeah. They have squid. I love their big, like, wooden uh, boards, right? Okay. Where they put the fish. And then here you have rice. Yes. What else do you have? Just more this fish, right? Eggs, it's eggs too. Eggs too? Yeah, this one is octopus. Octopus? Yeah. Wow, that looks good. Yeah. So we're making our way along the street. In front of us, you have the castle. We're making a left here and we're going to the beach. It's the cuttlefish. Yeah, it's cuttlefish. But people often mistake it or mistook it as octopus. Octopus has the eight tentacles. Yeah, this is squid. A bigger squid, yeah. But many people call it octopus, which is very wrong. So this is the fishing village right castle right here you have fishing boats everywhere fishermen you know they bring in their catch there's kids swimming here on the beach so there's the beach right yep. you have fishermen coming in and out all day with their catch so many boats easily 200 boats here and be aware people don't love the camera here so if you're gonna come take photos you have to ask or stay in the far end where the castle is or in this far end right can't really just go up and start taking photos. It's not really allowed here. Wow, look at this. Look at this thing. Incredible. It's amazing. It's a, the whole area. How many people here are fishermen? Like the whole town? About 98% of the population over here are engaged in fishing related activities. Wow. Either fishermen, fishmongers, because the, the men will go and bring out the fish, give it to the women, to the market and sell. So the local economy is fishing. Fishing, entirely. That's it, fishing. entirely. Now let's enter Cape Coast Castle from the door of no return. So why do you call it the door of no return? Because this is where our brothers and sisters were taken away and they never come back. 
but today when you come in we will be written door of return because now we are open for our brothers and sisters to come back home Cape Coast Castle was built by the English around 1665. Chronologically, this piece of land changes from Portuguese, Swedish, Danes, Dutch. The English were the last to occupy this piece of land from Cabo Castle by the Portuguese, now Cape Coast Castle. Right, it became slave posts right after the English took over the land after 1664 65 when they developed fort kalorisberg by the swedish into a status of a castle so what can we see here we can see the male and female dungeons a very long tunnel door of no return door of return condemned cell and governor's residence at the time yeah, so we're at one of the lookout points right so right here we have the bay of guinea right bay of guinea gulf of guinea yes. gulf of guinea over here we have the beach a few restaurants on the beach they're actually you know putting rocks here because of a ro erosion so what is this right here up here is the governor's residence at a time built by sir achiba diesel under his tenure that he added this area to the castle between 1792 and 1802 so here was the reception area there we have cannons so this is where they all stayed the governor stayed at a time here we have the the governor's bedroom and the hall, a very large one indeed. I mean, this guy had a mansion in here. What a big place. So this is his bedroom right here. The residence. The residence. Wow, huge. Huge one. Huge. Lots of good air flowing through. Obviously at the time, no air conditioning. You need to be next to the coast. Get that breeze. Right now we're moving to the male slave dungeons and the female dungeons as well from the governor's residence. Isaac. We're going straight down, and here we go. Male slave dungeons. Oh man, that was intense. So, has this been restored, or it's just been like this ever since? Everything you see here is ever since now, except the electric car system. In this dungeon, at any given time, there was roughly a thousand slaves sitting here waiting to be shipped out. Two weeks minimum, six weeks average, 12 weeks maximum. Only a few never saw the dungeons before they shipped them away because they arrived at a time there were ships ready to take off and there were vacancies. So straight away they were taken to door of no return. Wow. And there was no lights, guys. No lights during that time. So they were in the dark. That's the crazy. Three windows that give them light ventilation. These three? That's it? Wow, and you said 150 in this in this area. 150 were in this section that measures 32 by 16 feet. You multiply that number by five to give you 700 close to 1,000 in the male dungeon of the Cape Coast Castle. This is African traditional temple which forms part of our heritage, our culture, the way some of us we pray, we worship our maker before the arrows came with the Islamic faith and then the Europeans also coming with the Christian faith to us. So the object of worship is the rock called Nana Tabi. Similar things are in Benin, Togo, and the rest. Purely African traditional faith. So if you guys don't know, Ghana is a Christian country. North of us, we have Burkina Faso, that is Islamic country. But then Togo and Benin, they don't have these religions that we have, right? They have African religions, or African, African faiths, right? So it's a little different over there. From this angle, all the way to this side, marks the beginning of a very huge underground tunnel that the male slaves had walked through it like this to join the women at the door of no return for shipment. Both ends of the tunnel were closed after 1834 when slave trade finally ended in British West Africa. You know, obviously this is a very emotional place, slavery, crazy part of our history, you know? Um, but here, at the bottom, as you can see, no bricks. Why? Basically, this is a mix of fecal matter, crying, you know, tears, and blood. Throw up. Throw up. I mean, everything, everything. This is the way for them to leave, and this is, that's why we don't see any bricks, right? It's crazy. Surprisingly enough, above the male dungeon was the church. This was the church. No way. Yes. That God President Barack Obama mad. He didn't get a connection. That how can you have a church praising God up there and then right underneath group of people there crying, staying with their own fecal matters and the rest. And he asked, that was a big hypocrisy on this very earth. Church services slips underneath. This 
is the condemned cell that had three doors of such. And one of the oldest fittings we have in this castle is this door, a little over two centuries. Pitch pine wood, copper plate covering it, giving it strong protection, and then an iron bar cross over. And the men who often use the shackles to hit the face of the officers, try to kill them, were also executed here through starvation and suffocation because they didn't give them food, water, light, and air. And once they died, they carried the body and then off to the Atlantic Ocean. Let's have a quick look at the condemned cell of the Cape Coast castle. So the freedom fighters were actually slaves that you know didn't understand why they were slaves, so they fought, tried to fight out, and they were like, no, 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 you have no rights, you're a slave. They put them in here, and then eventually, they threw them into the sea. Once they died. Once they died. Here we have 16 of the remaining cannons that were on the west side. So this is how they defended from the Dutch, okay? So 16. Half of them are small, right? So you said half a kilometer, and these would shoot an entire kilometer. And over here, you can see some of the cannonballs. Man, super rusty. Obviously, they've been here a few hundred years. Look at this. Oh, dude, I can't even pick it up. Probably like 20 pounds. Wow, huge, man. Currently, we are on top of the very long tunnel from where we saw the uh, shrine in the mill dungeon. It's about 70 meters long. We're going to see it at the time the men walk through as it had enjoyed the women at door of no return. So that's what we saw, they closed it, right? And right here, it went under this to the very end to the door no return, which is, the, which is where we entered. Right here we have a hole where you can see the tunnel. This is where an officer would count them and also it gave circulation, right? And over here is the gateway or door with no return. Here ends the tunnel that you just saw some seconds ago. Also sealed once they slept it was officially over in 1833, but then they have to move like this, like that. And this was the initial exit to the boat, to the bigger ships, docked a kilometer away from the castle and then off to the various destinations in Americas and the Caribbean communities. But they, later they sold the side on account that the seawater was very uh, rough, disturbing them anytime it was in high tide. So they closed it before the trade ended officially in the castle. Right here we have one of the most disgusting facts about this castle is that, you know, the officers, if they wanted to rape the slaves, they could. And if they, the slaves said no, they would just shove them in here, close the door. So the woman would be stuck in here until she changed her mind. And right here before we enter the door of no return is the female slave dungeons on the right and on the left. So they had two. Uh, how many women in here? Between 200 and 250 in each section also. 300 to 500 the maximum as against 700 1,000 men and very sad to say that sometimes you'll be here for two weeks, six weeks that you don't take shower unless the officer wanted to have you on his bed. In that case, they will take you to the shore, wash off you, water system, fetch bath you to their bedroom after they rape, come back to the dungeons. However, some became their concubines and treated them very nicely and they got pregnant for them in the castle and outside the castle and gave them such names as European names, Michelle, Margaret, Van Dyke, Van der Poel. And this is the door of no return. So I entered through here. You're not supposed to do that. You enter from over there. But the reason that this is called door of no return is because obviously they left. They never came back. But the other side now, they've changed it, the door of return, because they're encouraging you know, people who are descendants of slaves to come back to understand the history of what happened here. Elmina is actually the Elmina. Elmina. The gold mine. Gold mine? I mean, gold eventually was the, the, the item that attracted the Portuguese. So by 1482, they were able to put up their fort right here at Elmina and we are going to stay at Golden Hill Parker which is on the hill and having a brilliant overview of El Elmina Township and Elmina is known for livelihood you can see the people coming with uh, brass band others are dancing and so on it's an amazing town La, La Mina like Elmina La yeah the mining right right now we're passing through the fisherman area over here we have the fisherman boats we have a mini market, right? You can smell the fish. That's where they smoke the fish. So they smoke, they dry, they do everything here, yeah. right? So there's a seafood market over here. Looks like it. Look at that dry ice. Ice blocks before going into the sea. Because some of them, they stay there for two days, three days, or even a week, and they need to conserve the catch. We just made a right on a dirt road, and my hotel is right in front of us. Golden Hill Parker right up there at the very end. Hold on to something. 
It was great. Uphill. I think it's gonna be an awesome view, right? The view, looking over, wow. Wow, luckily we're getting here before the sun completely sets. So we still got the view. And this is the hotel, Golden Hill Parker. Reception right here, ocean view restaurant right there, overlooking the ocean and the town. And over here we have the rooms. The hotel has 16 rooms, they have a restaurant, they have a pool. He's giving me two different room choices, number 23 and number 22. And literally in front of us, look, in front of the rooms, we have the view of the castle, the salt area, the fisherman boats, and the whole town. Dude, what a view. Okay, so the choices he gave me was this one and that one. Basically the same thing. So I took this one. So what number is this, number 23? Yeah, 22. Nice. And this is my room, number 22. The difference between 22 and 23 across the hall is 23 has twin size beds, or two twin beds, right? This one has a king size bed, but the same exact layout, literally it's flipped. So as soon as you enter, you go right here, and you have the bathroom, okay? Spacious, you have the toilet, the shower, faucet, lots of light. Then over here to the left, you have a mini bar, comes with two waters, you have this nice wood, I like this, cause it's like, it's a little different, right? So it's, you know, you have these like square cutouts, the way they put together. So you have a desk here, lock box, here you're gonna hang your clothes. Over here is the entire room, right? So king size bed, you have a chair, Again, loving this. Night table, have air conditioning, always, TV, and we also have a patio. All right. So the view is beautiful over the entire city. Castle, get a salt, fishing village, incredible. Over here we have the room 23. Here we have a few other rooms. And that's it guys. Now I'm gonna go to the restaurant. I'm gonna get probably a beer and eat some food. How are you doing? Good. David, this pleasure. This is Emmanuel. Emmanuel? Yeah, from Yulinaipu. A pleasure. You are from Yulinaipu. Yeah. I'm ready to explore this place. Yeah, nice. I want, I want to eat happy? some good food, man. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we're going to get you. Yeah. Good food here? Yeah, we're going to get you good. How about, how about some alcohol? <laughs> alcohol, we're going to get you. We're going to get you that. Yeah, you know. So over here to the right, we have the restaurant. Open yeah. air restaurant. Yeah, open air restaurant. And over here, this is more like a lounge area. Yeah, more, more or less relaxing area. We have the lounge over there. So lounge over there, pool yeah. in the middle, yeah, infinity pool. pool. I love the pool, man. The pool's sick. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Cool. It's awesome. It's, it's awesome. And over here to the left, we yeah. have their bar. So their bar, you guys have, you know, obviously a lot of imported drinks, but we also yeah. have some Ghanaian, Ghanaian drinks. drinks. So what are we gonna try? What do you want to serve me tonight? Yeah, let's try Alomo. Alomo? Alomo is the authentic beater. Let's do it. Yeah, so let's try it. It's coming, 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 coming. This one, and then we go again. This is the second. All right, my friends, I'm gonna try this right here. Mm. Mm. It's, it's bitter. bitter. It's bitter. I tried this in uh in Akira, something similar. I don't know if it was exactly this one. Yeah, but so tomorrow we're going to uh, uh, go on with our aqua day. Aqua day. Aqua day. Uh, wow, this, this is a very bitter drink. Yeah, very bitter. But it's good for your immune system. Yeah, it's more of herbs. You know, you are in Africa. So, so yeah, it's, everything is herbs. Perfect. Yeah, and you need to wow. try it, try and try and try again, again. And you, <laughs> And yeah, you feel it. You yeah, feel yeah, it. After, yeah, yeah, I feel like you're gonna feel it after one, man. Yeah, after this one. is this is like Mama Juana and DR. <laughs> yeah. This is like a, so it's herbs. It's it's so like medicinal. Yeah, you know? medicinal with mahogany, with uh, oh. aquarenses. And oh wow, those things. It's good stuff, but yeah, it's good. Damn, it's strong, man. Yeah, it's really, it's really. Good. What is it? Thirty-eight you know, percent? I think yeah. it's. 25. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a second there. One already, and then there's a second shot. The best mixes. If you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, the best mix. Let's do it. Here in Ghana. So it's Herb Africa and Mandingo mix. Cheers, dude. Cheers. Same thing? <laughs> you? No! Cheers, cheers, cheers. Yes, snap! Cheers, Africa. Let's try it. Yeah, that's what I'm finding with them. 
That is amazing. amazing. It's it's strong, bitter, and sweet. And, and sweet. It's like and all three. It goes down in your immune system, and then you are a man. <laughs> <laughs> Real Ghana. That's it, yes. That's it. This is Ghana, and it goes in your. Tomorrow you you try the appetizer. Appetition. Yeah, appetition, yeah, and you, it will just relax you like. Oh. <laughs> this prawns from Elmina, we bought it right from the from the fishing boat, fresh fish. Nothing here is frozen. They get it no, literally from right there. Yeah, from to the kitchen. Perfect. You don't know what we're gonna, gonna make. What are you yeah, yeah, we're gonna make something that we think David is here. <laughs> <laughs> this is yam cheese butter sauce. You're gonna mix the prawns inside? So it looks like a curry, right? Very Indian. Oh, it smells great, man. <laughs> Flour, egg, Can curry, oh, salt. So it is curry? Yes. So flour, egg, curry, salt? Yes. With prawns? Yes. That's the best. And the ginger and garlic. Oh, you got me a ginger. Yes. The garlic. <laughs> So you put it on a little mini skewer, right? Yeah, this one's good for the grill. This one is going to grill it. Mustard. And the ginger and the garlic. All right, so we're doing prawns on the grill. Where'd you go, my friend? Where'd you go? Oh, wow. I'll do some chicken here, so I'll grill this one later. Do you prawns? It has to be golden brown. It reminds me of like a shrimp tempura. No, like, yeah, it's fried, obviously. The butter. Just a vegetable to garnish it. Assorted fish okra stew. Okra stew? Yes. So this is okra stew with fish, crab, also uh, plantains, right? Willy, right? You said Willy. Willy, Willy. Willy. Okay. So it's banana. Some people call it big banana. Big banana. Yes. It goes in there. Right here we have yam, root vegetable, very similar to cassava. Even though this is not mine, I still want to see how they made this fish because he's going to put on the grill, he's going to put some spice, fire, fire, fire. She's also making some beef stew right there. Oh, this is the best. Ooh, it's okay. Coming to the grill. This so fish, it takes some time before. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're the best. Thank you. <laughs> you really are the best. Again, double dap. Let's go. Let's go eat. Thank you. These two chefs, the ultimate. All right, I'm ready to eat. Okay. Yes. This place is too awesome. They gave me three dishes. Right here we have the prawns. They were on the grill and then mixed and sauteed with some vegetables and mm, yam fries. It's fried prawns with some jolo, jolo, a salad and delicious spicy sauce. And over there at the very end, you have panku. And this is okra stew with crab and fish. It is awesome, man. A lot of food. Lots of food. And you eat all. I'm eating all, all of it, I'm eating all of it. All I know. <laughs> oh, these prawns look delicious. So they still come with the tails, right? So you just gotta cut that off. Get a nice prawn. Mm-hmm. Mm. Prawn curry. Oh, that's fire. Oh, wow. Mm. With a bunch of vegetables. Love it. So you have 
carrots, onions, green peppers, the best. So good. Mm-hmm. Okay. We never expected David this year, but he is here. He is here. I'm here. In Elmina, in the adventure of Ghana, Elmina is the best place to be. Go to here, Faka Hotel. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. This is fantastic, man. This mix is good. Dude, you're the man. Yeah. It's and really actually, I'm going to do this. This, this with this. Mmm. Spicy? Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Oh. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy. But it's spicy, spicy. Mm. This Ghana. Mmm. That's spicy. We, we love spicy. Me too. Yeah, and it, it boosts your immune system. Mm -hmm. you know? It's good for your immune system. You can sweat. You can bring out all the sweat within your body. Exactly. Yeah. And then. I love this guy, by the way. Yeah, and then. Yeah, it's good. And we have the best vegetables around. It's Everything is organic. Yeah, everything is organic. We don't want the rubber, rubber. No. Yeah, we're, no thinking, of, we're thinking of turning the waste into practical. Yeah, always. So man. watch out. So watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. It's part of our as part of our social responsibility. Dude, I gotta tell yeah. you, this is delicious. That's from Elmina Fish Market. Mm. It's never imported, never exported. Wow. Um, so tomorrow we're going to go, we're going to be there at the fish market. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah. And then you will see everything for yourself. This is too good. Yeah, everything. Mmm. Quick cheers, because I need to calm down that heat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh, that is hot. Yeah. No, you, you, nah, it's a joke, it's a joke. These prawns, my friends, wow. Wow, wow, so good. The best thing to do, though, is to mix it, right? Get some of the veggies, so if you want, cut up. You, know, you don't have to get a huge bite. Just get like that, and bam. Mm-hmm. Mm. Gotta say the staff here has been excellent. Like everybody's so friendly, ridiculous. Mhm. Mm yeah, man. I was getting to that. Mmm, the tail. Pull it out. Mhm. Mm Some people I know eat the tails. I don't love to eat the tail. It actually tastes like a like a Thai green curry. Mhm. Mm mmm. Oh, so good. Wow, let me jump over here. Get one of these bad boys. Mmm. -hmm. So these are prawns. They have curry and they're fried. Whoa, let me just drop it into the spice. Mm hmm. I'm so happy on this trip. I've been like limiting my eating. I didn't want to overdo it every single day. But now, I'm going all in. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Look at this rice. Oh wow. So yellow rice. So there's like some raisins in there. What else? Try again. Mmm. Oh guys. The food at this hotel, fire fire. Get a bunch of this rice. So good. There's way more abundance of rice than bread in Ghana. Mmm. But the best thing to do is grab these delicious fried curry prawns, dip them. Like that. Mmm. Oh yeah. Not so spicy. For me, if it's not on level. 11, it's not spicy. All right there, look at, look at this sauce. Whoa. Mm-hmm. You guys like a little bit of ting, some nice spice, flavors. The good thing in Ghana, nothing's bland. Nothing. Some things, a little mixed up with it, so it's not so bland, because obviously, these are a lot of cassava, a lot of yam. Ooh, wow. A big chunk of rice. 
Mm. And our last dish is okra stew with crab fish and bangku. Bangku. You usually have this with tilapia. So it's a um, cassava dough with corn flour. Let me just dip in here. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, I'm gonna tell you how it is. I have traveled around the world, been to a lot of places, and sometimes you see something that's very different. And you're like, wow, that's unique. So this is like slimy. Mm. So we got crab. You got fish, look at this, pulling out the spines right here. Whoa, that is a spine right there. The backbone. And here. Mm. Careful. There are spines. This is an exotic dish. She was making it and I was like, you know what, let me try it. And I'm just gonna go in here and get something. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. So you have okra, but then you have, like I said, crab and fish, but it's slimy. And I think the reason for that is to mix it with the banku. And then because of that, you're supposed to do it with your hands, right? You're not supposed to eat this with a fork or knife. So you dip it like that. Mm -hmm. And this dough really fills you up. Always comes the same. Always wrapped in plastic, you open it up, and that's it. Mm. Whoa, you got tripe? I don't know. She didn't really tell me what it was, but this is definitely a fish because you got a bone right there. All right, so you got fish, you have this. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it up, get a piece of bangu, put this right here. I mean, I'm just trying it, right? We'll deepen the crab, just go in here, break off, you know? Mm hmm pull all that out, mm. Mm hmm Oh, it's delicious, but this is slimy. Straight up slime. I'm good, then I'm gonna have another tiny piece. To be honest, I get really nervous with all the bones. Mm hmm like right here, there's another piece of like sardine or something. Mm -hmm. Salted dry fish. And this, this is crab. And this, I don't know. The easiest thing to eat here is the banku. You know? Woo! Now it's not. <laughs> you have to be really adventurous, dive as in depth as possible into every country you visit. You know, when I go to places, I want to eat their food, I want to try to speak their language and just interact with the people. Thank you both. That was awesome. Hey, thank you. The stew, extremely exotic, but so good. Like it was wild, but at the same time really good. You know, sticky, slimy. Yeah. Ah, so that's the crabs, right? Let's go explore Elmina, Ghana. Ready. Let's go, I'm hungry. <laughs> no. So we're gonna walk through the town now. And right here, we have two different bridges, right? Pedestrian bridge? That's the, uh, the old bridge. That's the old bridge? But it's mainly pedestrians bridge. now. And this one, obviously, is for traffic, right? So, yeah. car traffic. And also, the people come to welcome uh, their friends uh, who have come back from the sea. Okay. Uh, so, they stand on the bridge to applaud them, uh, to clap for them. Because it's not easy to stay overnight or for many days on the sea. So if you make it back, you mean you survived, right? That's the main thing. Survival. Wow, this is incredible. Whoa. I cannot believe how many people there are here. Fishing boats, people, fish, markets right there, right? Yeah. So this is a river or a mini stream to the lake, right? Benya Lagoon. Benya Lagoon. Okay. And at the extreme end, that's where the women are doing the smoking. I mean, they smoke the fish. Okay. And up there as well. So that's like a church? No, that's uh, Fort St. Jago. Fort St. Jago. Built by the Dutch. Built by the Dutch after they took over from the Portuguese. Over at the top, my hotel's right over there. Yeah. They smoke the fish here. And this is a never ending market. Crazy, chaotic, 7.30 in the morning, and this place is packed. 
you know, only one day you come here, you don't see them like this. That is Tuesday. Tuesday is their sacred day. So oh. No activity here. So don't come here on Tuesday because you won't see this. Yeah. So most of these guys on the bridge have friends that are coming back from sea. That's why they're there. They're just waiting to see if they make it back, right? But some of them are boat owners. So they own the boat, they rent it out to a fisherman. That's sort of how this works. So we're gonna go right now into the fish market. This is wild. It's an experience. Sensory overload. Smells, sound, the whole thing. My auntie is cooking banku. And this banku is from uh, corn dough, fermented corn dough. In the panty land, they don't mix it with cassava dough. This is a finished product. You can eat it with peanut soup. You can eat it with uh, live soup. You can eat it with any other soup. This is not with cassava. This is just corn dough, right? My friend, it smells so good. Oh, yeah. I'm here with Michael. Michael's yeah. a local. He's going to be taking us around the entire fishing area. We're going to see right. where they smoke the fish, where they build the boats. Now, yeah. Michael, tell me a little bit about the fishermen, how this works, and you told me Tuesday's like taboo, right? Okay. Welcome to Elimina Fishing Market. The activities we find here is mostly fish selling. Our fisher foods will normally go to the sea to overnight, do all the fishing activities, relax, and in the morning they will bring their catch. So every day, you know, in the morning there's such a bricks business going on. So as you can see, they are now trying to straighten their nets after bringing their catch. They are preparing for the next day expedition. One thing significant about the fishing here is that in Ghana, we don't do fishing on Tuesday. Tuesday is a taboo to do fishing. Our ancestors institute Tuesday to be a taboo as a form of conservation so that the fish can replenish itself and also give the fisher foods a time to rest, to mend their net and also fix their broken uh, boots. We we'll enter the market is uh, to have a look at different fish or catch that they have brought and also get to understand the daily lifestyle of a fisher food in Elimina. As you can see, there's business going on. The fishmongers are negotiating and buying the fish from the locals. You can see all the pan filled with fish is getting ready to be taken to another place, either to sort it dry it or just preserve it so that they can send it to the interland for a massive sale. Yeah, this place is bustling. I mean, easily like 10,000 people right here. Yeah, so yeah, many yeah, different yeah. fish vendors. Yeah. We said fish mongo. That is the fish mongers. They are the women who do the selling and they make more money than the fish apples themselves. Wow. <laughs> so it's fishermen and yeah. fisher mongos, right? Yes. That's sort of how it is. Yeah. And here, I mean, just a lot of small fish. Like tiny ones. So yeah, it, it means that this is what they go to do. Oftentimes, they catch a very big fish from Balakuda to tuna. Okay. Yes. So that's tuna here. Yes. So today, this is what they go. The next day you come, you see a different species of fishes. Yeah. But one thing I have to mention is that when you come to this market, obviously you're coming with a guide. You got to be yeah. very, very respectful. Yeah. You can't just go taking photos and video. You're right. You have to ask. And most likely they're gonna ask for a tip. Yeah, you can't give yeah. them like two, five, five yes, whatever you can yes, really afford. Yes, yes. I personally can't give everybody five. I, I'm sure if you are to give everybody five, you run out, out of business. Look at the number of people here. No, it's too much, too much. <laughs> and the one thing I gotta also mention is that this is a real exotic market. You know, obviously it's a wet market. It is extremely wet on the floor. Yeah, yeah. There's you know there's juices there's guts there's uh, oils yeah, it's a yeah, mix yes, you know yes. they're moving fish everywhere they're cutting so be aware of that this is not for the faint of hearted <laughs> what is that this is the cassava fish it looks like a trout it's like a yeah, big trout yeah right? they even have much bigger than this okay so this one has shrimp this is the squid squid that's cuttlefish no 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 that is the, the, the squid again they are not coming to take the squid out of it Yeah, it's a delicacy here. This is what we use for our sorting fish. 
And in any meal, you know, that is what you use as a foundation. So it's something that we really enjoy here. You guys enjoy shark? We enjoy shark here. No, you know, no, no. We sort it. So now we are going to head to where the boats are built. So we are going to see the artisanal skills of the fish shuffles and how they boat their boats like this. Really hard to walk through here, guys. So many people, so much chaos. Incredible. The smells. The floor is really, really wet, though. Be careful, especially here. It's a little flooded. We're trying to get through. Literally jumping from rock to rock. And over here, we have the area where the carpenters, right? This is where they do the boats. Right next to us, we have a few people, fishermen, um, you know, fixing their nets. Also, more fishermen cutting up fish, unscaling them, right? And this is it. Oh, wow, look at this. Incredible. So, it's the skeleton of the boat, right? They only have the exterior so far. What you see is the beginning. Normally, they use a very strong wood, like the, road, the redwood or the mahogany. They build a skeleton like this and start putting the uh the pallets all over to get to a point like this big boats right and they're deep right so the reason for that is they can store their fish and put ice on it so that it doesn't go bad because oftentimes they stay in the sea for days and over here we're going to enter where they smoke the fish and hopefully we find some breakfast so these are the smoking area where our fishmongers smoke the fish preserve it and send it to the interland and also for local consumption so right here we have all the firewood they use to yeah. smoke the fish and this is it so they do it in like different layers and the reason for that is to save you know save wood basically she's auntie abba she's the owner of the place so this is a uh, a complete um, social enterprise because at the end of the day it provides living wood for a lot of families in Elimina. You can also pick one from your end. We love it. So how do you do this? You break the head off a little bit. You get in here. Obviously there's a few spines. Just got to get in. Mm -hmm. Nice. Salty. Dry smoke. I mean, the whole experience is amazing. Coming here, seeing these women working hard, smoking the fish, mm. and then getting to try it. Oh, it's good. The only thing I won't use is the head. The rest, edible. But you gotta definitely break the spine out, right? Get all the flesh. Don't get too close to the smokers. Wow. I can't see right now. My eyes. Gotta get out of here. Oh, man. That's intense. I can't even imagine doing that every day. Oh, ah, it's it's something else. Something else. Yeah, yeah, but this is it's yeah, intense. Daily. Too intense. I'm telling you, chaotic, crazy, yeah. amazing fish market. Seeing everything. We're going to eat now. I have built up an appetite. I am starving. It is 10 in the morning. And we're going straight to eat. Thank you. Oh, let's try that. This is so good for you. Wow. The best part. Is a tender part, right? Yeah. Here we go. So I'm just gonna get a piece. So obviously they cut a piece of the coconut to eat, so you can use it as a spoon. And this is it. So the flesh, like that. I'm on first one find Mhm. Mhm. That's nice. Mmm. Love the flesh. The only thing is, it's really filling. Like if you drink the coconut and then have the flesh. Yeah, four. This is the part I love about Ghana. I do this usually in India, Brazil, wherever I'm traveling, where tropics. Mm -hmm. Readily available. How much is it? Two? Two CDs. So let's say we are paying eight CDs. That will be a dollar and um, some cents. He got two. 
I got one, he got one. But dude, I got four off that. <laughs> I mean, the flesh, the coconut. That's yeah, tender. yeah, mm. yeah. So fire. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> So we're back on the bridge. As you can see, it has died down completely. We were here over two hours ago when you know boats were coming in, the fishermen were pulling in all their catch, they were untangling the nets, and now as you can see, no one. They've all gone in, they're selling everything, and they're gone. But the fishermen right here in this area have disappeared. I need some watch. I'm hungry. So this is our spot where we're gonna have some watch. So rice, cassava flour, noodles a fish like stew and some delicious paste spicy right so because there's nowhere to sit over there we're coming to this back area to post up so this morning we are having the watch it watch it it's rice with beans and we take it with stew you can add add uh, macaroni and garlic fish or meat uh, it's a breakfast it's a common breakfast in ghana as well from coast from the south to the north Watch it, it's popular. All right, bro, let's do this. So the rice, the cassava flour. What's it called, the cassava flour? Garnet. Yeah. Garnet. Yeah. Garnet. Roasted cassava flour. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that is some spicy, spicy sauce, huh? I love the it, so. Black one is spicy. Yeah, yeah, black one's spicy. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, I love the mix. Mm. So, salt flour gives it a nice crunch. Mixed with the spice of that sauce. Noodles. It almost feels like a... Almost like a dry ramen bowl with noodles. I love the, the watcher. Like, it's, it's phenomenal. Mm. Dude, I can eat this every day. Oh. That's <laughs> I'll tell you this. Watch it is my favorite dish in Ghana. Watch it, right? Check. Okay. So you do it like this. Just get some of that flesh, mix it. Mm -hmm. Bro, it's gonna be so yummy. I like the gravy they added to the fish. Wow. You know we are in like the fish capital of Ghana. You have to eat fish. You gotta be really careful though. This is hard, man. Not so easy. How are you? And right in front of us, we have an old church from the year 1900. And inside, right now, prayers in session, right? Yeah. Service going on. Service going on. It's it's awesome. Like they're like going, they're jamming in there, huh? In a very different way. Yeah. Rice and beef. And this plate costs six CDs, so a dollar. 20 cents each. Mm. So good. You have to try this dish when you come to Almina, right here. Not Almina. But it, it, it varies, yeah? Mm. When you go to the bigger cities, you may not get this for six cities. Yeah, price will change. Also, the fish, it's so fresh, it's so delicious, yeah. and that curry, that like, Delicious thing on top, right? Sorry, not curry. Uh, Shito. 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 Sorry. It, it looks like curry, but it's Shito. Black pepper. Alright. I'm done. Next, we're going to the castle. Done with breakfast. Walking straight over to the castle. So, literally the same way we came. Across the bridge. On the left is the castle. So we decided to cross on the old bridge. As you can see, you gotta be really, really careful where you step. In the middle is a mini market, selling some shoes, some clothing here, some bags. Whoa, man, lots of holes here. Intense, guys. You gotta be really, really careful. So this castle, very, very similar to Cape Coast Castle. Yeah. In terms of color. Older than the Cape Coast Castle. Yeah, older, but similar in color, size, just the whole appearance, right? Yeah. This is it, we're entering Admina Castle. There's like lizards everywhere. This was obviously a moat. So the sea used to be inside here. Multiple defense walls. And here's the main gate. My man. Nice. What's your name? So my name is Kwamina. Born on Saturday. Uh, right now, we are in Elmina Castle. 
built by the Portuguese in 1482. They first arrived in 1471. In 1637, the Dutch took over the castle with the support from the locals before the English came in 1872. As of now, the castle is 539 years. This is the biggest and the oldest castle in the whole of West Africa. And because we are in Elmina, that's why we are hearing of Elmina Castle. Elmina is not the name of this town. The frequent supply of gold the Portuguese were getting from here, they call this place the mines. El Mina. El Mina. Now it's Elmina. The actual name of this place is Ano Mansa. Simply means inexhaustible water. Per the records over here, we are talking of 1,000 captives in every three months. In one year, we have about 4,000 captives, and the slave trade lasted for almost 400 years. The rooms on the ground floor were the storerooms. Later, the Portuguese changed the idea to human trade. All the storerooms were being converted to dungeons where captives were kept. In this castle, it was only the Portuguese and the Dutch they were here for the slavery activities. The English used Cape Coast Castle. In 1948, this place was used as a police training school. That's why the iron bars, the metals were placed. The policemen were using for training. They would just hold it to go up and down. Maybe after a tour, you'll try it. You want me to try it? <laughs> I'm good. So I think we're going to go to the dungeons, right? Yes. Dungeons are right over here. And also, this was like the general's house, right? Or the, the commanding chief, right? This is the cell for the freedom fighters. Just like Cape Coast Castle, any slave who tried to escape they would put him in here, and basically he would die in here, eventually thrown into the sea. Wow, tiny. So this is how they were living, and probably a lot of them at one time. And like basically go to the bathroom here, everything here, just stay here until they died. So sad. This cell was for the soldiers who misbehaved. Life in the castle was boring to them. Some of them went to the town without permission. Others were fighting among themselves. They were kept over there to be disciplined. Few hours they were released. In this room, about 150 to 200 men were kept here. At the same time, a passage to the room of no return. From that place, they were taken to the ships. In Cape Coast Castle, there's one huge dungeon for the men and two dungeons for the women. Here, there's three dungeons for the men, just like this, and there's three dungeons for the women. And obviously, they closed off the, the door of no return, right? They closed it, they sealed it. And now we're entering the room of no return. Whoa, you get really low here. Yeah. Wow, so this was sealed off, right? Yeah. We are now in the room of no return. This is the gate of no return. In this room, many of the captives, they broke down in tears over here. Wet, bitter, because seeing their parents and other relatives were far from realization. Through this gate, some of the captives were sent to America's West Indies, some part of Europe for them to work in their various mines, plantations, and cotton farms. The gate was very wide at the time of gold and the ivory. When they changed the idea to human trade, they narrowed the gates to restrict movement. About five or ten people were chained to each other. They were moving on a sideways like this. The sea was closer, so the ships would be anchored at the shore before they would bring small boats to convey the captives into. Looking at the small size of the gates, by the time they will be here for one month, two months, three months, they will just lose weight. They can easily pass through here. This is really insane, guys. They narrowed it so much that me, I'm super thin, and I can barely fit through here. So now we're going to the female dungeon. Yes, we are moving. And where is that? Across the hall? Yeah. On this side? Yes. So that's the female dungeon. What do they do here to the wall? Actually, that's it. Architectural design that they is it, oh, okay, that's architectural design. I thought it was like maybe like them like I don't know carving through or something trying to escape. I have no idea, you know. No. So about 400 women were spread out here. They were kept in the various rooms. Okay, of course it's just a small dungeon. Yes. This is more like complex yes. with rooms, right? Oh. Initially, this place wasn't painted. There wasn't any color until 1979 when the castle was selected as World Heritage Site under UNESCO. That was the first time they painted the castle, and it had repainted on several occasions. Most of the wooden aspects have been changed. In this room, you can see a few different like rags, right? And the reason for that is because before COVID, people were allowed to come here and spend the night to basically feel what the slaves went through, right? Obviously with no guards, no one bothering you, etc. Just come here, cover yourself up, go to sleep, wake up the next day, and see what it is to sleep in a cell. 
the reservoir. It covers the whole place over here. Whenever it rains, water passes through the pipes at the back and gets inside for drinking, washing, bath, etc. by the Portuguese. We are now moving to the largest dungeon for the female captives. In this room, about 150 women were kept here. Buckets were placed at various corners for them to ease themselves. Some of the captives were weak. They could not even walk from the middle of the dungeon to where the buckets were placed. They did everything on the floor. Feces, urine, vomiting, blood, and they slept in it. There were no mats for them. That's the original floor they slept on. Obviously, this is a very emotional, dark place. Um, hard to really get the words to explain the feeling here. Uh, just sad, really sad. And one of the things I gotta tell you about the floor is that this was originally completely like super thick in filth, all black. They've cleaned it, that's why you can see the stones. You know, in Cape Coast Castle, there's pieces where you don't see any stones. And it's basically because it sat there for over, you know, 190 something years in Cape Coast Castle. So they almost never cleaned it and just let it keep rising. So each room has a different number of slaves, 150, 130, 120. But if you can imagine it, 120 women here, they're almost like stacked on top of each other. You know, you can barely walk, barely move, and then literally just waiting for them to be shipped out. We are done with the dungeons. We are moving up to the next level where some of the officers were used to stay. So please, we are moving. So this is where all the officers used to stay, right? Yes. Many rooms. This is bigger than Cape Coast, right? So all this is where they used to stay. And from the top, we have views over the entire town. Nice. And this is the view of Elmina. Yes. So we have a few cannons here. We have the other fort, Dutch fort. Bridge, fishing boats, and the sea. Yeah. On the way, as you can see, this is like real Africa, bush, right? So we're literally entering the forest. Kakum National Park was a forest reserve from 1931 until 1992 when they converted into a national park. There, there's a lot of different species of wildlife, you know, elephants, monkeys. They also have lots of birds. Ready? Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, and we're gonna eat some food. We're gonna see what else we can explore on this road. Let's do it. We've been driving like 20 minutes and as you can see, it keeps changing, right? So it's all bush palm trees, banana trees, and then it's a village. Bush again, village. So how many villages are there? It's a number of villages. When traveling from Cape Coast or Almina to Kakum. And basically these villages are into farming. It depends on farm. Women do process the palm nuts into oil, men tap wine, and they have cacao uh, plantations as well. And by the way, we're really lucky because this road, he was telling me right before the election, it was a really, really bumpy road and they recently paved it. I've been in some other places in Africa where you literally turn and then you have like two or three hours on a long stretch because it's a dirt road and lots of potholes. This is actually perfect. Paved road, super smooth, really clean. I've been on those, those African massage roads, man. Don't be surprised to experience some of this bumpy. Huh? Oh, we'll be giving you some massage before you leave. <laughs> I like it, dude. I just don't like how long it takes. Sometimes you have to go super slow because there's huge potholes. So just right here in front of us is the Kakum National Park, where we are going to visit. It reminds me of a yunque in Puerto Rico. Just the lush, the density, super thick trees, very green. Damn, dude, this is beautiful. We just passed through the gate of the park. It costs two CDs per person to enter. They offer two different activities, canopy walk and nature walk. You have to pay for each of those separately. I'm just doing the canopy walk. And here's the reception, right? And guys, we actually got here really, really fast. It wasn't an hour, it was more like 30 minutes. And that's because the road has been recently paved. That's good news, dude. To go on the camping walk, it costs 60 CDs per foreigner, 25 for somebody from Ghana, and they also offer nature walks, and there's a hotel here, so if you wanna stay here for a night, you can do that. Here in the waiting area, there's a restaurant, there's a TV, and there's a gift shop. So if you wanna buy some stuff, you can do it right here. If you're hungry or you wanna get a beer, you can do that. It's one o'clock, let's go. Hey, I'll see you soon. Yeah. All right, so we're walking in. So how far is it to the canopy? Roughly 10 hour tour. 
One hour tour. It's an hour roughly, but it's like we will be climbing some more here okay. before we get to the destination. Oh, intense, huh? It's nice. Dude. It's it's nice. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a big stairway. Yeah. You definitely have to for another wonder. <laughs> definitely have to be fit for this one. Yeah. Woo! Super steep, right? Yeah. So it's like a almost a foot per step. Oh man, it's not easy. Noisy, I mean. Yeah, exercising. Amazing air. And he was telling me, <sighs> lots of different endangered species here. Too. Yes, we have more than four globally endangered animals. Oh yeah, and four. excluding lion. Oh wow. Because they normally live in savanna areas. The one we just entered is the primary forest. The only difference is that the secondary forest has been used for farming activities before. So meaning these trees behind us has been cut down before and it has regenerated. By the one we just entered, has even been used for any farm activity. So it hasn't been uh, deforested ever, yes, right? Yes. So it's been protected since 31. Yes. So we're entering the canopy walk now. Oh, need to breathe. Fresh air, birds chirping. It's actually cooler here. Woo! And this is the first bridge. Amazing, built in 1994. So if you wanna do all seven bridges, you make a right and you go all the way. Wow, look at this. Oh, it's swaying. Careful. It's actually a little hard with a camera. Just grab on. Wow. So here's the first platform. It's not so bad. This is actually easier. So I made it right because I want to do all seven bridges. Woo! Because we're with a group, um, every time somebody steps onto the bridge, it sways even more. So definitely just hold on. Obviously, it'd be almost impossible to fall off and there's never been an accident, guys. Never been an accident here. And the bridges were built in 1994. Oh, here we go. Beautiful, look at this. So we're 40 meters above the forest. Lots of trees, lots of flies in the air. <laughs> They're bugging me, just in my ear. Wow, so you just gotta keep going, right? Whoa, incredible, look how huge these trees are. Massive trees. That one's easy, like 70 meters. Over there, so many more. I mean, I understand why there's so many monkeys here. Wow, so this, it reminds me of a place I went to on the big island of Hawaii, in the north. We didn't do suspension bridges though, we did zip line. And it also reminds me of Enchisi. I think it's Enchisi in Malawi. I've been to a lot of forests like this, guys. I've been to a lot of suspension bridges. Let's get low. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. You don't wanna, you don't wanna go against it. <laughs> Feel better here. It's better to get on the bridge before anybody else gets on so it doesn't keep swaying. Because the second people get on, it's like woof, woof, woof. She keeps going back and forth. Nothing Nervous? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many flies, right? So many flies. Oh, this is great. It's not so scary. My friends back here, I don't know why they're so scared, but it's good. It's, it's really enjoyable. Nice breeze. The only thing I don't like are little mosquitoes. Not mosquitoes, little flies. But overall, incredible experience. Look at this. To get all in. Just look, breathe, enjoy the wildlife. Love it. Oh, are you scared? Yes. <laughs> Too many people on this bridge. Just gotta hold on. Oh, whoa, it's swaying. Really hold on. All right guys, so this is the second to last bridge. We're doing basically a loop, right? <laughs> Big loop. Look, it's ways. <laughs> Don't be so scared, Cecile. Oh, no. You're scared. This was very long, and it's at an incline. We're going up. Woo! I was wrong. That was third to last. There's two smaller ones now. Beautiful. Woo! All right, one more to go. Highly suggest doing this when you come to Ghana. You have to do it when you come to Ghana. It's definitely worth it. Here we go, last one, woo! Sounded like something cracked. Gotta go slow. 
<laughs> oh man, it was awesome. So guys, we did it. Seven suspension bridges. Oh man, really enjoyable, beautiful place. Want me to do something cool? Watch. Oh. Woo! Oh, sorry. All right, did it. You're you, you, you are creating your own scenario. Yeah. <laughs> My man, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. You're awesome. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I loved it, bro. Okay. Thank you. Great. Take Thank care. You. Thank you. And that's it, my friends. I did it. I can continue on nature walk from there another hour, but I'm good. We're gonna go back on the road. We're gonna see if we can find some food and maybe we'll see some crocs. Maybe, maybe. I survived. You survived. I'm sorry. Because it's Sunday, there's only one blacksmith here. Usually, there's a few, right? He just came back from church, and he's putting this one together. So what is this? What is this piece of metal? Well, it's a, a stool that we use on the farm, generally to um, uproot palm tree, or a root of any particular tree. We want to take it from the ground, so that we can farm there. So this is a tool they use to cut the roots of the tree. So he's just sharpening them. That's basically what he's doing right here. He's doing like three or four. These are ready right here. Great. You're the man. Thank you. Well, that was a nice surprise. Really cool experience there. Seeing a blacksmith here, some random village. I love this stuff. I really do. Woo! And that was crazy hot in there. I don't know how he's in there all day. All right, let's go find some food. Ben, you missed it. It was awesome, man. <laughs> In the same village, we found a small restaurant called Tourist Spot. They have fufu, they have rice packages, and they have fufu with bush meat. Okay, exotic. I think we have to try it. As an appetizer, so we can go in and have some alombo or casa preco uh, so that we can enjoy the omoto or fufu. So it's like another bitter, right? Another bitter drink? And this is their small bar. Lots of drinks. Lots of local drinks. You good? Ghana. Ghana. <laughs> My friend, cheers. This is Alombo Bites. Alombo Bites. Yeah. Alombo Bites. Oh, strong. Another herbal, healthy drink, right? Medicinal. Oh, I don't know why they love these bitters. They're a little intense. Mm. Woo. Flagrance, lots of alcohol, but good. It's a, nice way, it's a nice way to start. Cheers, my man, cheers. And they have a few different dishes. They have fufu with fish and fufu with bush meat. The bush meat is what we saw the other day. It's like a big rodent. The guy was telling me it's delicious, and you know what? I have to try it. I'm here in Ghana. I'm not gonna not try it. Gotta try it. Bush meat. Two type of meat, uh, bush meat. They have grass cutter and they have antelope. So actually I'm taking the grass cutter and you are taking the antelope. Yeah, so I'm not eating grass cutter, I'm eating antelope. Thank you. All right guys, we have our fufu with our bush meat. I got antelope, you got grass cutter. Let's eat. Look. What? Fufu with grass cutter and palm nut soup. You're going to show me if it's okay, the quantity of soup I'm pouring on the food, all right? Okay. So I don't have fufu, I have omutu, which is a local rice ball. So two rice balls. Here I have the ribs of the antelope. Yes. Right there, I have another piece of flesh. And this is like a peanut sauce? Oh, that's good. Oh, it's gonna be fire. What I'm gonna do is pull out this toothpick. Oh, there's the flesh. 
<laughs> this is exotic. It's wild. Mm. It's like judging. Mm. I personally love peanut sauce. Oh, this grass cutter right here? Look at this. Oh, wow. That's really good. So I have to get in here, grab this rice ball. So good. Best thing to do is let it like, ooh, absorb that yummy peanut sauce. It's like a peanut soup, right? Oh man, it's so good. Mm. This actually reminds me of like sticky rice, the Japanese sticky rice, you know? Just like bathe it. And everybody here has been so nice. The whole staff, they let me film everything. Mmm. This is the best. This is a very nice bowl. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So plus some of the ribs, right? Get some of that flesh. Mm -hmm. It literally falls off the bone. Best to just combine them both, right? Like that. Oh. I love the rice ball. I actually like it better than the baku and the fufu. The ribs is the best piece of any animal. Look at that, right? Oh, look at all that. The intestine of the grass cutter. Yeah? The light soup, but they mix it with the intestine of the grass cutter. I highly recommend eating everything peanut in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Just round that rice ball. Oh, yeah. Obviously, bush meat is very gamey. The best dish I've had in Ghana. Mm. One last bite, I'm gonna show you how you end this. We go in and we drink. Mmm. Wow. It's like a peanut soup. Guys, I love peanut. Peanut dressing is the main reason why I love Indonesian dishes. And this is just like, out of control. It's very different, you know, eating from a soup with your hand. You usually use a spoon, right? But, when in Ghana, do like the Ghanaians. Oh man, it's too good. I have to clean my hands. Yes. So this is always like this, not because of COVID, right? Just always. That's what this one is like this. Thank you. Thank you. Like less than two bucks for like three drinks. And then 66 to 12 for three big bowls. Good deal. Thank you. Delicious. With your food? Oh. Good. Best. Ben's very shy. <laughs> Let's go! Where the crocodiles at? Another stop, guys. I don't know what we're gonna see here. Alright, let's cross. You know, whenever you are eating the red bread, they add some white flour. And I said it's from uh, cassava dough. So this is the cassava dough. And uh, they are roasting it. Uh, roasted cassava dough is what we call gari. It goes with almost uh, all the food. Today we add wache. On top of the wache, they add gari. Basically, they turn the cassava into powder, okay. right? So it's like powder, and then they heat it up, and that's it, it's cassava flour. Cassava flour, they, they roast the cassava. Incredible, so this is it. 
So they have the fire here. Woo, really hot. The woman here and the man here. <laughs> so the guy is ready. Oh, it's so hot. Mm. Nice, very crunchy. Nice and crunch. It's so hot. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's too hot. If you get on that side, you're boiling. But how do they know when it's ready? It's so hot. Put my hand here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh. I'm like on fire. Ah. Hey, you're the best. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you. Ah. Everybody in these veggies are too nice. Wow, where's our guy? There he is. Woo! Let's go. And after a 20 minute drive, we're back in Elmina. We're in the front house of the church, Fort Castle over here. And lots of people. Very easy day trip. This is an afternoon day trip. You know, we started like at 12.30, made our way all the way over there. That was the trip to Kakum National Park from Almina. Let's start this journey to Kumasi. Let's rock and roll. Kumasi. Kumasi, all the way. Ben, hey. let's go, let's go. Oh, oh. <laughs> you guys are the best. Isaac and Ben, my team here in Ghana. And this is Elmina. So we explored all day yesterday. We went through the fish market. We saw the castle, went all the way up to Kakum National Park. And that's sort of what you can do, right? So 24 hours you can do it, but obviously take 48 hours because just to get here it takes time. Coming from Accra, it would take like four to five hours. The best time to fish it, the fish market or the fish, the fishing harbor, it's from six to 10 a.m. Yeah, and you definitely need a guy to go through there. And yeah, once we pass this church, we're getting through the end of the town, and over here we have palm trees, Gulf of Guinea, and then we're gonna keep going. We're gonna pass Cape Coast and then make a left, right? Yeah. We just left the Accra Road, and now we're on the Cape Coast Kumasi Road. If you don't stop, you just go straight the whole way, you're there in four hours. Four long hours. And it's beautiful, it's like a bush, right? This is real Africa. Over here to the right, to the left, bush. You probably see a bunch of villages on the way, lots of farming communities, and that's basically it. This is the green road because we are heading toward the garden city, which is Kumasi. A lot of activity on the road, especially we're going to meet the women who are processing the palm nuts into oil. Uh, hopefully we'll also see how they make uh, palm wine. Palm wine is actually really hard to come by, but he said it's the best. It's the best drink in Ghana. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was wild. Here's another village washing cars. Goats, again, farming communities. Love it. Man, I love Africa. Our first stop is going to be the palm wine uh, base, where they are tapping the wine and distilling the wine into gin. Let's get there. That's right here. Can't wait to see this. Guys, you would never know this is here. Literally, look at the hole. This is, this is it. Because the bush is so thick, you would never see it. Walking into the bush, you can see over here to the right and the left are the old palm. So they cut the palm down and they get the trunk and that's where they tap it. Basically, it's like the sap, right? And here on the floor, my God, look at these ants, huge ants, monster ants. Be careful, they do bite. Hello. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine, are you? Very good. Where's the wine? Where's the wine? So this is the, the fresh wine they collected this morning from the trees. They will let it uh, be here for three or four days to be well fermented. And when they are sure the one is well fermented, then they come here, they pour, they fill the, the gallons to half with the fermented wine. Then they set the fire there. So it's the vapor that will pass through the tube these two systems, we call it the cooling system. So by the time it's reached the end, it becomes the, the gin. So I've seen this many times in Albania when they make raki. Same thing, right? 
They put the grapes into these, they let it sit there usually 10 days. Here, you let, you let it sit four days. Then once it's fermented, put it over here, heat it up, right? Then it goes through cooling, and then the vapor comes out, and that is gin. So this is we fresh. We locally aquatici. Aquatici. Yeah. Can I try this? You can try it. Oh man. Man, this tastes like dolly. This tastes like the thing I told you about in India, in oh. Kerala. Yes. Similar thing. Mmm. Oh, that's good. So some of these are the sap, fermenting sap. Some are the gin that's ready. So we're gonna take a few bottles with us. Oh, the way video. How are we? Walking to the back here, never ending palm trees, right? So they cut all these down, they get into the root, and then from there, they tap it. They pull out the sap. And that's how this whole process starts, right? So we're gonna see them cutting a palm tree. Woo, so many bugs. We're in the jungle, man. Wow, so many, look at this. It's like a palm tree graveyard. Yeah. This is wild. Oh my God. So they have to actually like tip it over to get into that, right? Yes. And this is what this forest used to look like or this farm, right? It used to have all these huge palm trees just like these right here, all over the place. And they're slowly cutting through them and pulling out the sap. Wow, man. Never seen this before. So uh, we have stages when you want to put uh, wine into gin. Uh, so you this peel. stage is what we call the dressing. It's dressing the palm trees. That means it's going to make the hole, take off some branches and make the hole inside, in which they will put the bamboo tube to let the wine flow through into the container uh, at the base of the, of the tree. Like Isaac said, this is called dressing. So he undresses the palm tree, makes a deep hole, dresses it again, then later they come with the bamboo and you know, a little container and it drips out, the sap comes out. This is awesome, man. This is super unique. I've never even heard of this. Yeah. First time, man, I didn't know about this. Uh, this is uh, very popular in the southern part of Ghana, Togo, Benin, and I believe Cote d'Ivoire and Nigeria. At the moment, we have pulled down 200 palm trees, which you are going to tap. But the dressing, you can do up to 100 a day. So that means two days, you'll be done with it. Okay. Wow, so 100 a day, there's 200 here. So this is like quick, right? So he got to move on to the next one. And do they replant here? I'm guessing they replant. After they finish this one, they will, uh, the owner of the farm can start farming maybe a different crops, maybe cassava or corn, and they will move to the next level. I mean, they want to finish the whole uh, plantation, but you cannot do it at one go. So that's why they need to do 200, 300 at a time, and when they finish, they go to the next uh, place. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sun is already, you can see inside, it's already wet. Unfortunately, those viewing cannot uh, smell it. Ah, it's nice. Let me smell this. Oh, wow. It smells good. For us in the south, palm tree is a mystic tree because we have, you know, a variety of products from the same tree. Even the branches used to make a broom for sweeping our rooms or compound. We make the fence from the, the bigger part of the branches, a whole lot. And if they finish tapping the wine, there is some worm that comes out. After the worms comes the mushrooms. Very, very special. So basically it's sustainable farming because the product has like six or seven byproducts. Yeah. So it's the palm tree, but then many other things many. come from it. So now we're gonna see the worm that he was talking about. Little ones, right? 
Oh, they're big. They're big? I mean, he's like getting deep into the palm tree. Whoa. You want to try it? We're just going to roast it and, uh, I mean, you'll taste it. Awesome. Very nice. Worms for breakfast. <laughs> I mean, I'm down to try that, especially because it just roasted. It. It's not that bad. I've tried bugs many times in Asia. Love it. In China and in Thailand, I've eaten a bunch of worms and uh, and grasshoppers. But this is different. A Ghanaian delicacy. Yeah. So we're having a worm kebab. That's cool. Very unique. Cool experience, my man. This is the best. This is what I wanted to do here in Ghana. Okay. See cool, unique things like this. Oh, and he's, he's adding salt, right? Add salt. So our friend here pulled out some of the ash from the fire. Move it here to the side. Put that worm kebab in the middle. It's sizzling. Keeps turning it, turning it, turning it until it cooks completely. And then we're gonna have breakfast. That's the reason I was, I was telling you that this one, they are too small. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no? Uh. <laughs> Tastes like barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> now I need some wine to flush this down. It's not so bad. But like you were saying, too small. Maybe bigger. We're able to cut the bigger one. Mm. Roast it nicely. Ground pepper with onion, oh. tomato, and put it inside. A little chili too, a little pepper. And you add a little bit of wine to that food. Oh man, like amazing. Heaven. This is way better than the gin. Boss man here is going to show me how he taps it. Oh, it just popped like that. Wow. This one, you pay 20 CD <laughs> Okay, I'm going to taste it. So I just put my finger inside. Mmm. Nice. <laughs> it's like sweet. So sweet. So sweet. So good. So the hole he made earlier, now it's full of sap. He drills a hole to the very end, all the way through the palm tree. Then he puts the bamboo shoot, and then it drains it, right? It drains it into this container, and that's it. That's how you make the sap, or that's how you extract the sap from the palm tree. From there, it goes over there, four days to ferment. Eventually, they can turn into gin and so on and so forth. My friends, this is epic, epic morning. Thank you so much. Yeah. The first stop took about an hour. I think this road trip is gonna be a long one, a really long one. Dude, you got the gin? I'm going to be equal now. One for you, one for me. Uh, <laughs> let's go. We're two hours into our journey and as you can see, the road has changed a bit. It's not as smooth and perfectly paved as before. There's more potholes. Ben here is like literally navigating. He sees the pothole, he turns, he goes like this. He's going side to side. Oh, there it is, another pothole. <laughs> so many potholes. It's like uh, this. No, no, no. After I went, it will be okay. Yeah? Yeah, it's going to be smooth later. So it's going to get better again. But it's not so bad. This is not like really, really bad compared to like that real African massage dirt road. We're, we're going to probably have something like that in Mole, no? It's like straight, it's a straight junk. We haven't had breakfast, so we decided to stop here on the road and we found a lady who's, uh, you know, roasting or grilling plantains. And we're going to take it with peanuts. It is a good combination. Well, actually, we take this as a snack. All right, so we took this as a snack, right? So it was five CDs for like four roasted um, plantains. It hurts. Probably you have to wait a little bit. So we are in uh, Asim Posu, and it's the biggest town in between Cape Coast and Kumasi. Huge town, guys, huge. You can see, there's non-stop vendors selling clothing, shoes, produce. I mean, it never ends here. These are the style, right? This is sort of how it is always. There's one or two huge towns along the road. You know, from Accra to Cape Coast, we ran into a few. Here, this is the main big one. Between here, there's small villages, right? And some of them have markets, 
And yeah, I mean, if you want to, you can get off, you know, buy some stuff, um, you know, explore like local life. But that's basically it. And lots of music always blasting. Look at the, look at the speakers here. That Range Rover is in a hurry. Literally just like haunt its way through the whole traffic. All right, let's try this plantain. Ooh, still hot. Mmm, good. Wow, this one's nice and mushy outside. A little burnt. Mmm, smoky too. Isaac, this is awesome. So good, tasty. Mm-hmm. For one dollar, we all eat. So we just seen uh, cacao beans being dried, but uh, we'll make a stop later to see properly how they bring it. Another quick stop. Let's get some coconuts. I'm thirsty. That's coconut. Yeah, man, it's the you best. Like it? I love it. Love it. Very nice coconut. This yes, African coconut. Very nice one. Well, very sweet. I want one too. You want one? Yes. Okay. You? Thanks, one. Everybody. Hey! I'm not knowing that you're doing wrong. My turn, man. I'm thirsty. I'm really thirsty. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's my friends helping me here. Very tasty. Done. One, yeah. Done. I break it for you. Yeah. This way I can use your hand. Yeah. Yeah. The blood. Mm. So good. So fresh. Whoa. It's a big one. Six or two per person. Not bad, so a dollar twenty for three people to have coconuts. Thank you. Yo, 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 Thank yo, you. Yo, yo, yo. Thank you guys. Yo. This is the best part about the road trips. All the little stops. Every stop is super interesting, very interactive. And everybody here along the road is super friendly, man. Super friendly. If you want to experience Ghana in its best way, is to make stops along the route as you head towards your next destination. How much is it? How much? One, one for one city. Two city. One for two city and one city. Big one, big one is two city. So now we are entering the Ashanti region. And what was the region we were in? Central region. So they left the central region for the Ashanti region. So we just basically entered a different state, right? Like it's a region, but for us, like Americans, it would be like a different state, okay? How many, how many regions are there in Ghana? We now have uh, 16 regions. 16. 16. So I gotta try this donut. This is like a big piece of bread, right? It almost reminds me of a cinnamon roll. Fluffy, yummy bread. We are making a stop here to see our mothers, our sisters processing the palm nut into oil. At this base, specifically, they produce kennel oil. Oh, wow, look at that mask. Huge moss behind us. Massive. This is where they produce the oil. Whoa. So this is uh, kernel nuts, a palm fruit. You know, we have the palm fruit. After we have two type of oil that we get from the palm fruit. So the fruit is first processed and we get the red oil. And this is what my mothers are processing here. Inside this, when you crack this, you have the kernel nuts. And so this is what they are going to roast, ground it, and then when they cook the paste, the oil will come on top. So what these two women are doing is they're going through trying to find the nuts that were not cracked by the machine. So they separate them so they can obviously crack them. So the nut comes over here, and this is where it's soaked. What these ladies are doing here is they're separating the dirt from the nuts, okay? That's actually before it goes over here to get soaked. 
Okay, so again, starts over there. They bring it over here, they separate it. They put it in there, separate it, the nut from the shell. So it's all about separating the nut and finally getting the nut super clean and perfect to, to turn into oil, right? What the woman was uh, separating, when they bring it here, you know, the nut, the shell are still mixed. So in order to get the nut out, they have this water. It contains um, clay. So when they put it inside, the nut comes on the top and the shell stays down because the shells are heavy than the nut. The nut is a bit lighter. So they come to the top of the wall. And it takes this. And this system they have come with, it's really very, uh, really quick, fast. A fast way to separate the nut and the shell. Uh, take a bit of the water huh, again to fill it, to fill it with another uh, uh, nut with the shell. So she just finished, right? On the top, you saw all the nuts. She took them out, so this is done. So that's the process, right? Yep. This lady wants me to come into this house. What's happening in here? That's the oil? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So right there is the oil, uh -huh. right? You ground it to paste. You are going to boil the, that paste. So when they are boiling, the oil will come to the top, to the surface, and they will be collecting it. It's the thickness of tar. She was saying it's super heavy. It's hard. It's really hard for her to lift it up. But you can see that eventually is boiled. The oil goes to the surface, and that's how we get palm oil. Kernel oil is white oil from the kernel. Two oils are made from the palm tree. It's been, I'd say, like a decade since I've done an eight-hour drive. Usually, I try to max it at four hours, but because of where we are in the country, the only way to get to Mole is to drive from here. If you are in Accra, you can fly it to Male. It's like a one-hour flight, and then from there, you drive, and it's like two and a half hours, three yeah, hours? Two and a half. Two and a half? Okay, so let's say three hours. Always think longer because of traffic, right? And yeah, this is Kumasi at 6 a.m., and there's traffic. <laughs> After 45 minutes of traffic, we are out of Kumasi, sort of. <laughs> There's still villages coming up here and there, but the like the hardest part to get out of all the traffic was in the main center. So we had to cross from my Airbnb all the way through the center and then to the other side. We left like at 5.45, 5.50, and now it's 6.35. So probably 45 minutes, but we're out, thank the Lord. But we're still gonna get a lot of traffic. You know, there's only you know, it's two lanes, that's it. So, it's always like that. And one thing I gotta say though about Kumasi, a lot of dust. A lot of dust, man. It's like, it's like, it almost feels like desert. This contrast, one hour outside of Kumasi is completely different. I mean, the, the level of the temperature, I mean, it was like 84 degrees over there, super hot at six in the morning, and now it's like chilly. It's like, woo, getting to the jungle, right? This is sort of how it is, you know, when you go to like national parks, Morning and night, always cold. During the day, boiling, scorching. And now, it's like jungle, village, a few different farms, and that's basically it, huh? The moment we move from the forest zone to the wooded savanna area, the palm trees are not going to be there anymore. But then, they have the shenat trees. So shenat become their major uh, product for uh, processing into various products. Soap, butter, oil, cream. There's a uh, breakfast. So we're going to have a uh, watch it. Perfect. Watch it. So right outside of my door is a lady with watch it. So then you just watch it. Watch it. There's from rice and beans. Then we have some chicken. We have the curry added. And some grapes. And then we have uh, tomato uh, sauce. On top, you have the black pepper. So if you don't like the spicy one, you can just remove the black one aside. This is it, my friends. The watcha. It's so good. Love the rice, spring onions, the lettuce, and you have this delicious, like freaking yummy, a little sweet, a little spicy. Mmm, that sauce. Mm -hmm. This is actually my favorite dish in the country. Big rice bowl. We got some chicken here as well. Mm-hmm. Yummy. The spice, man. Delicious. I like it. It's like um, arroz con frijoles, basically. Mm-hmm. 
Diggy Rice. This is what most of the school kids they take in the morning before going to school. Right here, all school kids. And it's more like a sticky rice, right? So it has textures like, I wouldn't say paella or risotto, but it's more dry. It's more like Central American rice and beans. Just cook the rice. When the rice is almost done, uh, no. when the beans is almost done, mm -hmm. then they add the rice. So they cook best the beans. So here in Ghana, you eat a lot of rice and a lot of fufu, which is basically cassava. They also do a lot of corn dough. It's a big mix, right? Corn, cassava, and rice. And this rice is the local rice. Alright. Okay. Not important. Like it's freaking phenomenal. Ooh, now it's spicy, huh? <laughs> mm. You have a nice piece of chicken. You can get chicken or you can get fish. Man, Kumasi was hot in comparison to this. Mm. Fried chicken, lightly fried. Still very juicy. Mmm, crispy. Oh wow, that is chicken though. So I just asked her for some more black pepper, that black pepper sauce. Oh man, it's so spicy. It's good, it's delicious. Hey buddy. Mm -hmm. It's like a, more like a pasty black pepper sauce, right? It's like pasty. This is a huge rice bowl for breakfast. And each bowl is like five, right? It's like one US dollar? No, five, five, so ten. Mm -hmm. That's $2. Yeah. $2. Nice sounds. Eight in the morning here, side of the road, in the middle of Ghana. I don't even know where we are right now in the world. <laughs> Who's there? Can I see the name? Abopo. Abopo? Mm -hmm. A B O 4. Okay, I'm done. Mm. So spicy. I am full, I'm ready to go. Awesome, let's go. I'm actually really hot now. That black pepper, ooh, that's spicy. Super spicy. So now we are in the East Bono region, a newly created region, and Techima, where we are now, is the original capital. And this region is also known for the cashew production. So it's like a big town, this place. It's a big town, it's a big town. yeah. So compared to the other villages, I mean, this is big. You have low rises, you have high rises, you have lots of streets, so many more vendors, and obviously traffic and tuk tuk galore. Tuk tuks are everywhere. Whoa. So it's different. I mean, we haven't been to a village like this before. Because most of them are, have been like minuscule, right? Yeah. After 15 minutes, we're out of that town. It wasn't so busy because it's not a market day, but you know, bus station, mechanics, vendors, not that much to see there, right? Yeah. If you pass through, probably stop for some food. If not, just continue. It's one of the major cashew trading points in- uh, Cashew yeah. trading. So we should try some cashews, but I don't see anything on the street. Oh, I haven't seen sure. Yeah? And uh, one of the farms to uh, taste the fruits. Okay, yeah, I mean, if we could try one, it would be great. I just, the funny thing is, it's not like India. Like, you don't see a million vendors on the street selling that one product. No. It's harder to come by. And what you see in front of us, like that haze, that's a mix between pollution and the dust from the Sahara Desert. So it's not straight pollution. It's not just a smog, right? Uh, Benny, Bush Benny. So all these smogs mixed with the Tahaza Sahara Desert uh, dust, it creates this um, um, environment. Quick stop, guys. We're gonna go see the cashew farm. So these are all cashews, right? All these? Remember, it's a little different here in Ghana. It's not like a cashew farm with a sign where people are like selling stuff and you can go in and visit. No, this is just like on the side of the road, just walk in and see it. Yeah, it's nature, right? These are the fruits. This one they are ready to eat. But here, initially we were just eating the fruit. But for some years now, cashew has become cash crops in uh, Ghanaian economy. And so people are start having the farm. If they don't mind, if you pass through and eat the fruits, just make sure you drop the nuts 
under the tree so that the farmer can come and uh, collect it some of them they even place ba basket on the farm so you can drop the nut inside just drop it right here and then mm. oh so good mm -hmm. mm. mine's like it's almost like sweet and sour it's sweet and sour mm -hmm. So here in Ghana, you're not gonna see people roasting cashews on the side of the road. That's not how it works, right? You can just come up here, pull off the crop, leave the cashew right there, and then eat. Again, super moist, sour. Mmm. But it's delicious. Let's go. Wow, I just ate like three of those fruits. So good, cashew fruit. Remember, please be respectful. Leave the cashew by the tree. Leave it somewhere they can see it. The stretch of road that we're on now is completely rural. Farmers, farmers, farmers. That is it. I mean, we see a village here and there, but easily 15 to 20 minutes in between villages. So all of this is this, and the temperatures drop. It was 77 Fahrenheit this morning. Now, almost 10 p.m., it is like 87. Really hot. Put my arm out here, and it's cooking. Now we are getting to the drier uh, area. So it's becoming drier and drier. So more bushfire you are going to see along the roadside, unfortunately. So more savanna, right? This is like entering the African savanna up here. So we're going to make a brief stop at the young market here. In Kintampo. Kintampo, that's where we are? Kintampo, yes. So there's another big town, really big, similar to the one we just passed a little while ago. And Yam Market, where is it? Over here? Yeah. Right off the main street, behind a wall, there's this little neighborhood, and you have all these vendors. They're selling spices, they're selling fish, and here in the very back, we have the yam. Wow, lots of yam, man. Root vegetable. So this whole area is reserved for the yam uh, um, market. Hello. Hi, Mr. Uh, hi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Look how big this is. Wow. Huge. I love it. Uh, for me, yam, this. cassava all day. Are we buying some? Uh, three for ten cities. Three for ten cities. But for example, this one, they are a bit bigger, so it's 20 cities. Not so bad, so like for this huge one, it's like four US dollars. But he got a few small ones. Wow, so many. So this whole area is like this, right? All the yam are covered, as you can see over here. They're covered with like, uh, I don't know if that's... Come yeah. <laughs> back, She wants her to come back. But I need to show this. So here, look, see all the yam? This is where they cover it, right? So they use bamboo to cover. So guys, sorry, uh, that's not bamboo, that's high grass. It resembles bamboo. Very similar, right? Let's go. We have a very tight schedule because I have to get all the way to the National Park by 3. 3.30 is the last game drive of the day. Obviously, morning game drive, night game drive. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Take care. So this is the best place to buy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this lady's too funny. She wanted me to come here and take oh, photos of her. Yes, yes. Tomatoes, peppers, mm -hmm. small onions. Onions? Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Bye, bye. Have to go. Let's go, let's go. That was great, man. Oh, cool. Really, really cool. It's funny because for these guys, this is normal. For me, it's like exotic. <laughs> Another quick stop, we're gonna get some roasted yam. So it's cashews, yam, tomatoes, that's what they do in this area. Hey guys. Come here. Come here. Uh, bread. Bread. Ah, uh, bread. Ah, uh, bread. Ah, bread. Ah, and India. Ah, bread. Oh, bread. Wait. It's one city per piece. One city per piece? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye guys. Bye. Oh, the roasted plantains. That's the best. The only problem is we keep making stops like this. We're never going to get there. We got our fly. It's already 1030. Let's go, man. Let's go. You bought bread too? Yeah, for some friends in the Molly National Park. For the baboons, right? <laughs> no, I'm joking. 
The way you know you're in a savanna is when you see the huge termite mounds. Left and right, hundreds of them. We told me we're gonna see a giant one right now. How big is it? Like five meters? Five meters yeah, tall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. I've seen a few of those in South Africa, Swaziland as well. Any national park you go to that's savanna like this, this type of you know environment, you're gonna have that. So what is the African savanna? Basically, it's an ecosystem of tropical grassland with warm temperatures year-round with the highest seasonal rainfall in the summer. The savanna is characterized by grasses and small dispersed trees. They do not form closed canopies. So basically what that means is that the sun makes it to the ground, right? Because in forests, the sun doesn't get through all the trees. Here it does. So trees here and there, lots of grassland. It's a good snack, right? Roaster yam. I would add some spice though. Lots of potholes. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the name of this river? Black Volta. Black Volta. Black Volta. So after crossing that bridge, we entered a different region of the country. This is the savanna region. Right? Savannah region. Savanna. And it is dry. It is hot, 95 degrees. People are out. And this is mostly more uh, Muslim community, right? Because I see a lot of mosques. Obviously, the, what they're wearing is different too. The main ethnic group here is called Gunja. Okay, so we just made a left. You go this way, Tamale. You go left, you got Muller National Park. And we still have about 90 more minutes. It's 100 degrees outside. It's dry. And on the left and the right, we have the Shea trees. And we have to take this road to get back. So the day we leave, we're taking this road and we continue all the way to Tamale. So it's three hours from Mole, from the entrance, all the way to Tamale. So again, if you want to come up here and you don't go this way, you fly that from Accra to Tamale one hour and then drive three hours over here. So there is a, a center at Busunu where the women have been processing the shea nut into uh, butter or oil and cream. But then I'm not too sure if today they'll be open. We'll make a stop there. This is Gonja village. It's like a hut village, right? Yeah. It reminds me of, uh, I went to the country of Lesotho, sky capital Africa. This is how it is, all like huts like that. Just like mud huts with the grass on top, right? We made it here to one of the villages where the shea butter is made or where it's extracted, right? From the nut. Okay, okay. The nuts from the shea uh, fruits. So after eating the fruit, Oh, not many are eating. The nuts inside is what they are looking for. They just soak it, and now the next process is that they are going to roast it. After roasting, they mill it. After milling, they come back again to roast it, the, 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 the powder or the cracked one. That is what they are, they are doing here. So when they are done with this, they are just going to add water. And they will be stirring it and the fat or the oily part will come on top and they will be collecting it then after collecting that they are going to clean it the cleaning process also take time you know like they put it in water take it out put it in another water take it out until it become uh, perfect so it's a long process to make shea butter but in the end you have this incredible edible Butter plus they use it for cosmetics, right? For the skincare. For the skincare. Yeah. Then it's cooled. So if they leave it outside, it will become, uh, it will melt and become uh, oil, like cooking oil. Okay, so here we have the final product, the shea butter. Completely done, right? I'm gonna grab a little bit so to put it on when it's super dry outside. Put this on. Oh, it's very nice. Ah. Very nice. Oh man, I feel good. It's oily though. It's oily. So the one we have here, this is like rock solid. Take it outside, it just melts. Obviously you don't want to do that. Keep it in a solid state just like this. On my head. Oh, this is nice, man. Can we buy some here? Can you buy it or they don't sell it? Uh, actually, I'm going to say this one, they are not selling They're it. They're not selling it. It belong to the cooperative. It's a what? So remember, here, they only make the product. They don't sell it. They send it from here down to Accra. So unfortunately, we can't buy any. I really wanted to buy some, but I put enough on that I like moisturized my entire skin for the day. Right, let's get in the car. Still have some time to wait to mole. Damango. 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 This is the last town? 
no, not the last now, but the original capital. The original capital of this region? Savannah. Savannah. So we are still having uh, about 26 kilometers to the park. So we're gonna stop for lunch? Yeah. I'm excited for this lunch. I'm trying yolof for the first time, yolof, right? So that's the rice. So the difference is that this rice has been cooked in a stew, right? And then it also has noodles, uh, some red sauce, some cabbage, and some fried chicken. He's having, oh my God, he's having fufu with a light soup. And this is like a local restaurant, open air. In the back is the kitchen. You see them making, you know, porridge, fufu, everything. Mmm. No, it's good. A moist rice with noodles. Get a little bit of this. Mm -hmm. This is uh, unique. Most of the places you go to request for jollof rice, you don't see noodles inside. So this is uh, a very unique way also of doing it. So today I've eaten rice for breakfast with the wache. Now rice lunch. Oh, but it's good. Mmm. Marco flavor. This one is cabbage. Nice tang, not so much. So it's like a spicy tomato paste. And here, fried chicken. Oh yeah. I love fried chicken in this country. It's never like crazy fried. Mmm, it's so good. Really good food, and what does it cost? Like probably like five, right? It's always around one dollar. One to eight US dollar max. Unless you're having snail. Snail's a delicacy. I spent six dollars on a snail the other day. And that's it, my friends. That is lunch. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of it. And I'll see you in two minutes in the car. Mm. Buffalo, monkeys, crocs, elephants. I'm so excited. I'm staying here at the Zena Lodge, which is one of the first luxurious wildlife camps in West Africa. And from here, we're gonna explore, right? So we're gonna get in a game drive right now at 3.30. We're gonna see my room, and we're gonna eat some dinner. I have been to Mole National Park since 2007. Every year? Uh, every year. Hey. Elephant for sure and uh, the antelopes but sometimes i'm amazed uh, to see the baboons the way they behave baboons uh, baboons it's you have fun with them you know people say that there's lions there's lepers and hyenas lions they were telling me it's like really really rare at this point hyenas though there is right yeah. there is so we just got off the paved road now we're on a dirt road right and this is how it usually is in the savannah, right in the bush, the African bush, always dirt roads. So sometimes it will get to get, get to a point when they see the animal a bit far, you have to get down from the safari car and walk. So we just entered the lodge. I like it. So the outside, that's like a. It looks like how it is in uh, Burkina Faso, no? Burkina Mali. Burkina, yeah. yeah, it has like the same. No, the, no, I've seen Burkina. photos. It looks very similar, like that that mud wall, right? You have a few different areas. I'm guessing that's where the restaurant is. And those are all the different rooms. Wow, look at this. So this is the reception area. Huge ceilings, man. I've been to a lot of safari camps. This one's special. I already see it. This Thank is you. incredible. Thank you. Wow. So a lot of different areas we could sit, relax. We got the pool right there in Frinny Pool looking over the entire thing. Whoa, bro. Here, let me see this. Let me see this. <laughs> this is incredible. This is why it came. Forgot, I forgot my bathing suit though. Got a water hole right there. So we can see the elephants in the watering hole, right? Yeah. Hopefully later. This is real Africa. This is what I missed. When I went to South Africa, Swaziland, Malawi, I experienced this. Even in Rwanda, I had a few different experiences similar to this. So I'm freshly squeezed lime juice, bit of salt and sugar, just to refresh in you. Welcome drink, right? Yes. I need another. Okay, so the reception area has a lot of different purposes, right? So they receive you, you check in right there. Over here to the right is breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Looking over the entire savannah. You got the pool down there. Right here 
you have a bar, right? So beautiful. Wow, this is awesome. So the lodge has 25 rooms, 13 on this side, 12 on the other side, and they all look over the entire game reserve. One thing I gotta mention though, when you're walking to the room, stay on the path. Don't go off because he was telling me. Sometimes there's animals, you know, baboons, warhogs, they come around here. And this is my room right here. And this is my huge balcony slash terrace with an incredible view looking over the entire game reserve, two watering holes, and over here we have our first African elephant. And this is the luxurious tent. You're welcome, Mr. David. Dude, this is awesome. Thank you. Great. Wow, so huge tent, king size bed. Over here we have a workstation, mm -hmm. TV, right? Yes. And there's no walls or there is a wall over here, right? Yes, at the vanity area. So the vanity area is a solid wall. Yes. So, but this is a tent. Yes, it's a tent. Incredible, okay. So over here, lockbox. You can put up your clothes if you want to, if you're staying here for a few nights. We have the shower, love it. Lots of space, lots of light, right? Over here we have his and her faucets. And these are the organic products made from shea water. So okay. it's a body lotion, hand washing soaps as well. They are all locally made. From shea? From shea. That's amazing. Yes, please. And this is the toilet. Lots of light, cozy. Man, I love it. Luxurious tent here in Ghana. You have to stay at Zaina. Yes, and one of our unique things is this cooler box. So if I open you, you'll be surprised what you see inside. This is your local fridge. That's what we do. Every day we refill this ice. All right, my friends, it's time for the game drive. Let's go see some animals. You're my guy today? Of course, yes. Awesome, and you're right, my yeah. ranger, oh, yes. my wildlife. Okay. <laughs> First right. game drive, thank you guys so much. See I'll see you in two hours. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> Woo! We expect to see eight different species. Eight? Uh, sometimes we see more than the eight, sometimes we see less. That include the elephant. The Ronan Tloop, Hattabis, Waterbok, Cop, Bushbok. We have the three primates, the baboon, the potter's monkey, the green monkey or the velvet. These are what we, we are targeting this year. Perfect. Sometimes depending on the location we choose to. If you don't, we are not able to go further. Because I'm the only person staying at the lodge right now, there's no one else in the vehicle. I have the whole thing for myself. So what I love about this vehicle is that you can actually stand up and look through here, right? Wow. So in case there's animal over here, you can walk around, you can look around. This is great. Wow, so much air. Plus you have a cover, so you don't feel the heat that much, right? Woo! Look at this. We're on safari, yes. Cop, K-O-B. Cop, Cop. Yes. Antelope. Yes, and they are from the family of Bovidae. This structure that you see over here is a satellite camp. We have several of these structures dotted around advantageous places in the park. First 30 minutes, we've seen a few different antelope. You know, I've been on many game drives before and I know how it works. You go for two, three hours in the morning or in the afternoon and you look for animals, but you might see nothing and you might see the whole entire big five. You know, obviously if you're down in Kruger. But um, yeah, I mean, a few different antelope. Now we're going to a watering hole and there, oh my gosh, the African massage is wild. And there we'll see hopefully elephants. You know, this is a dry season. During dry season, the best place to see animals at the watering hole because there is no rain. And if you do come in summer, you know, it's rainy. So it'll be lush, there'll be a lot of animals, but it'll also be raining. So that's not good either. I, I personally like coming in dry season. That's the best time to go to Africa, African savannas. Ooh, 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 <laughs> this, is, this is wild. And yeah, we should see something soon. So definitely do two or three game drives when you go to any national park because you need to have multiple chances to see animals. I've gone on game drives where I've seen zero and then I've gone on game drives where I've seen everything and more. Oh, what's that? So lots of antelope, right? Forever antelope. Show me an elephant, my man. Uh, show me one. You might spot a leopard up in a tree somewhere. I'm right here with some juvenile water bucks. It's very small, confronting us. <laughs> so we just passed the watering hole where they always see the elephants and their babies, but unfortunately we missed them today. None, not one. Hopefully we see them on the way back. Maybe they're hidden. I mean, it's like this hit or miss every single time on a game drive. I know we'll see antelope, but I really want to see elephants. Elephants, hyenas, whatever. Give me a baboon, I want a baboon. Is there anything up there? Nope. 
So right here we have a baboon. He's on a tree. He's like taunting us. He's like, huh, huh. <laughs> He's alerting. Three, three are wooded. One is the top one is there. Two different types of vultures? Yes, we have one uh, African white bat and a hooded vulture. And right there we have Pumba, the war hog. But no Timon here. There's no meerkats in this savanna. <laughs> Back to the lodge, just in time for sunset. Wow, man, that is gorgeous. Yo. Thanks, my man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank you for the experience. Woo, hard to get out of this vehicle. Yeah, it's quite heavy. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So the best thing to do is come back to the lodge, go to the bar, get a view over their entire thing with a little drink. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's enjoy the sunset. It's going fast. Literally, when it hits, like the blur, it's gone. You come, you relax. You don't have to go on a safari if you don't want to, but I highly recommend it. That's why you come to, you know, wildlife game reserves to go out, see the animals, hit or miss every single time. But I mean, this is to relax. You know, you enjoy your time. You see, you chill. And I am beat because today I woke up at five in the morning to drive all the way out here. I drove eight hours from Kumasi, long drive. All right, guys, let's go film the kitchen. They're about to make my dinner. They're making you pork chops with fried yam. With fried Real yam. Pork chops, actually. So pork chops with fried yam. I haven't had pork chops at all on this trip. I'm crying. You. I really love your matching outfit. God, dude. So our dinner is the pork chops that are baking in the oven right now, and they have a sauce on top. Looks delicious. Over here we have the yam boiling as well, right? And this is the tomato soup as a starter. It all looks good, my friend. Fried chicken. And oyster soup. So my friend, the chef here, is making some snapper, fried snapper, that's for somebody else. She's also making me a Greek salad. And I'm not having boiled yam, I'm having fried yam. She just put it here. She also added some water because she said it comes out a little softer, right? Because because of that. Woo, look at that. I love it. It's like India. It's like the oil just pops. <laughs> All right, guys, dinner is served. Starting off with a delicious tomato soup. We have a Greek salad with some beets. And then we have the baked lamb chops with some delicious yam fries. Gotta try one. Mmm, still really hot. Okay. You're like, cool. Mm hmm. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's good. You know, I've been eating so much street food. This is a whole different world right now. Completely changed, right? I've been going all in in Ghanaian cuisine, literally eating fufu, tenke, tenke all day. And yeah, here we go. Mmm. Oh, creamy. Mmm. A little sweet, too. Next, I got my Greek salad. You know, my wife is Greek, half Greek. I love Greek salads. Fried cheese, tomato, black olives, sweet. Mmm, that sauce. You know, I'm huge into salads, vegetables. And for some reason, here in Ghana, they don't, you know, they do consume vegetables, but it's more like always in a stew, which basically the vegetable is broken down. So you don't actually get the whole thing, right? You don't get like this. You get to enjoy it, the crunchiness. Oh, the moistness in the main course. So I asked her for some spicy sauce. Mm hmm. Thing is, that if you ask for spice in Ghana, it's like Thailand. <laughs> they go crazy with the peppers. <coughs> and here we got it pork chop. Wow, look at this guy. Huge. I don't actually eat pork a lot, I eat way more lamb and goat and beef, but pork, very rare. Mm-hmm. Oh man. It's like she used like a like a soy glaze. Mmm. And the caramelized. Mm-hmm. Loving the yam fries. Yam. Root vegetable. Obviously we saw this on the way up. It's like a billion yams for sale. That's good. Mm-hmm. More spice. Always. And the last thing we gotta try 
all these vegetables. So she put like the fish oil. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's almost like that Chinese Szechuan taste. Mm-hmm. I love the crunchiness. Mm-hmm. A little spicy. Same time a little sweet. Oh my god. Perception. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm good. Morning. How are you too? Very good, man. Look at this. Man, the ceilings. So you was telling me the roof is that Burkina Faso style, right? The roof. <laughs> Right, and in the middle we have this. That's a whole, similar to La Ravanga, yeah. no? How this thing? Incredible. And I'm sitting right here. This is my table. This is my table. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Looking over the whole game reserve and the pool. Perfect. There's an elephant there? Yeah. No way. Nope. We have an elephant right here in the front of the lodge in the reception area. This is where you pull up, where they bring your luggage in. There's an elephant here at the watering hole. So the elephants gain some water, but I'm staying at a distance because you cannot get too close to an African elephant. It's super dangerous. Just keep your distance and just admire the beautiful beast. Wow, look at him, he's so big. He already sort of growled at me. <laughs> that was a nice surprise, seeing an elephant right there in the wild in front of the resort. I mean, priceless. Double espresso, here we have some jams, we have some donuts, we have granola, we have fruits, and we're gonna have some eggs. There's no one else here, so I'm here relaxing by myself, right? The pool in front of us, the incredible lodge, and just the animals. I mean, these are the type of experiences that you will really fall in love with Africa because this is just so different from, you know, traveling around the world, going to major cities, you know, being on a run, 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 run schedule. This is really relaxing tranquilo 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 like just chill what am i gonna eat i'm gonna have some of this mm, papaya all day mm -hmm. mm. fresh fruits mm. you read my mind man yeah there you go. fresh fruits and here we have watermelon right yeah fresh watermelon Oh man, fantastic. <laughs> Kitchen? Uh-huh. Let's go. Oh. She's making a very unique omelet for me. She added green pepper, red pepper, also some chilies, but then she added it to the salamander so it can get like nice and like, almost like quiche, right? It just changes the texture a little bit. Yeah. And then she's making over here the, the beef, Sausages, right? And what else are you making? Oh, you're gonna now you're gonna fry it. Okay, great. Oh, it's gonna be good. This is gonna be a spicy breakfast, huh? Yes. Last night the spice, super spice. <laughs> this is my Ghanaian uh, queen right here. <laughs> breakfast is ready. This is beautiful. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. I actually haven't seen eggs this like stunning in a long time. <laughs> okay, the beef sausage, this yeah. incredible egg. Uh -huh. I like how she did that in the salamander grill. Yeah. She added it and like, cooked the top, right? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Thank so you so much. I'm getting more of your special. Let's dive on to this food. Wow, so much food. To be honest, I might just eat this alone because the rest looks like a lot. Mmm. Oh yeah. Mmm. I love what she did here with the omelet. Oh, chilies, spicy. Get a little bit of sausage. Mm hmm. Wow. I'm gonna start doing that. Put the skillet straight into the salmon and grill like that. Mm hmm. So unique. So peaceful. This breakfast. Breakfast of champions. Mm hmm. All right, my friends. I have 15 minutes to get ready for the game drive. Quick espresso. I'm gonna finish my breakfast and let's go see some animals. I think right now I have good luck today. We saw an elephant this morning and right now we just saw some buffalo, some water buffalo right across in the watering hole. And here we have our ranger. My friend, how you doing? Let's go. Let's go. Let's, go. let's do it. Let's get it. Woo! Monster vehicle. And again, I'm alone. <laughs> and this is it, back in the bush. Remember, 
You can do two game drives a day. Also, they offer a walking tour. So a walking safari, you can do that as well. That's in the morning, so schedule it, obviously. Personally, I think this is better. You're gonna get way closer. You're gonna see way more. Walking safaris, you won't see so much, but it's a different experience. They explain to you tracks, you know, when they see, um, you know, manure and different things, right? Hey, we're gonna see stuff today. I'm so pumped today. Definitely. Today's happening. Definitely. It's a hit or miss, but today it's not a hit or miss. Today we're getting a, you know, a home run. <laughs> okay guys, so we're going down to where the watering hole is in front of the lodge to see if we can see the water buffalo, okay? FYI, you can never get out of the vehicle unless you're getting down with the ranger. And the ranger has a gun. He would never shoot the animal. What he'll do, if they do try to approach this elephant, you know, tries to like trample you, he'll shoot in the air to scare it. That's it. They would never actually shoot the animal. They do not want to hurt any animal. They just have this to protect us in case anything goes wrong. So unfortunately, a couple of uh, minutes ago, we did see uh, two, uh, two buffaloes down the water hole and upon driving down they unfortunately have left but there's a floating carcass that was hunted by the nine crocodiles we have a lot of nine crocodiles right here in this crocs right here in this water crocs. oh my gosh so the carcass is there can't get too close to the water obviously cannot go in the water all right let's continue these are patas monkey and they have decided to do well on the ground because they have a speed at 55 kilometers per hour. And they live in multiples of females, managed by one alpha male. There's another water hole here to the right, and there's a few more crocs. Hopefully we see an elephant there. Oh wow, is that elephant there? Yeah. No way. <laughs> I see the elephant right now. So there's four elephants over there. Looks like some mothers and some calves. to make any noise these guys get startled and they can trample wow what a massive piece remember the african elephant is way bigger than the asian elephant and i don't know if more aggressive but i wouldn't be, want to be too close if you approach an elephant i try to watch the body language if the ears are flapping it's feeding dangling the tail it's in a good mood the comfort zone, it finds itself with you. It's okay. So that's why it's flapping the ears, dangling the tail. It's not bothered about our present here. Okay guys, we're going back to the other water hole we were just at because there's six elephants there. They just called us from the resort and they said, hey, get them back here right now. So we got these four beautiful, you know, lone males. But now we're gonna go see uh, are they going to be females with, with uh, calves? Uh, when we go, I'll be able to take the signal to tell you this are female, this are not female. Perfect. But for sure. So we're racing our way back to the watering hole. And as you can see, we saw some guinea fowl pass by. We saw some antelope. We saw some monkeys. I mean, they're just racing through, passing the car. Incredible to see the wildlife just awake right now. You know, this is the perfect time to come. He was saying like around 9.30, 10 is when they all come out to the water hill because in the morning, it's a little cold. So they wait, you know, they want the water to get a little warmer. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay, back at the watering hole. Okay guys, so as we approach, gotta be really, really quiet. The whole way in, shh, silence. Okay, so they're right there in the water. There's four in the water, two above the water. Wow, they're taking a bath. We were about to sit down right here and a water monitor just came out of this tree and flew in the water. <laughs> it was big too, it was like four feet. Incredible. So they're here enjoying their bath. The other ones are getting a little muddy, right? So how they cool down. That guy's trying to get a little closer. Remember, gotta stay really far. And this is happening here at the watering hole right in front of the lodge. So the lodge is right there. If you were up there having a drink or in the pool, you can watch this at 10 in the morning. This is the closest I've been to elephants in the wild. Look at this. Literally what? He's like 15 meters away. Not so far. This is the max we can get. Obviously, we have the ranger here. He's here. If we see them occurring closer, we're gonna move away, right? Always respect the animal, but this is like a spectacle right now. This is <laughs> this is why I came here. This is why I really wanted to come to Mole. To get this close to the African elephant. And that is their natural skin. Yes. Super dark like that. Super dark. 
So David, you're gonna go into the hide. The hide? The hide. Um, it is a blank, and then when you're inside there, the elephants don't see you, but they give you all the time to look at them. The hide is basically, you know, a little bunker, right? It's a rock that they made, they carve it out, and from there, you go inside, always with the ranger, you can't go in there without the ranger, and we just wait, right? Maybe the elephant comes really, really close, they don't even notice you're there. I'm loving the hide. Just us, nature in front, they don't even see us. Yeah. This is actually a better view than from over there. The sun's in the right place. They're all right in front of us. They're still in the water, getting out. This is what they do every day, right? They take a bath, they get yeah. refreshed because it's about to get really hot. Around 2 p.m., it's 100, 105 Fahrenheit, which is like, let's say 40 Celsius. Crazy scorching hot, plus it's dry. So they need to warm up, right? They need some water. Best game drive, best game drive. I don't even need tonight. No, but I want it. I wanted it tonight. Super home run. Set it this morning. We're gonna see it because yesterday yep. we only saw antelope and we didn't see the elephants. But today we saw ten. Ten. Yeah. Two different watering holes. Ten elephants. These gave us, you know, a little performance there in the water, just playing around. Really incredible, man. Like breathtaking. Yeah. And now we're gonna get back in the vehicle and go back up there to the resort and have some lunch. All right, my friends, I need some water and some food. Water is life. Yeah, only a five minute drive and we're back up here. Let's go. So it's 11.30 right now. Have a little bit of time to kill before lunch. I'm gonna relax right here. Have a drink, then we're gonna eat. So I'm back in the kitchen, and here they're making grilled chicken with veg stew and garlic rice. So they're cooking it right now. She just grilled the chicken and then she put it into the oven. So she grills it, then bakes it, and then over here she's cutting up all the vegetables. So cabbage, carrots, onions, green pepper, tomatoes. 20 minutes, right? Hopefully. I love how they present every meal. So it's like three to five courses every time. Breakfast was like five courses. This is three courses. Got our green pea soup right here. Salad, double salad, chicken. Got some vegetable stew, some rice, and some chili. Let's start with the green pea soup. Mm. Oh wow, that's delicious. I don't think I've ever had green pea soup before like this. A little creamy, mm. so good. Next up, double salad. I usually just dive on the coleslaw one first. It's basically like sauerkraut, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. Cabbage, carrots, green peppers. It's a mayo, right? And here, regular salad with some black olives, some tomatoes, and some Parmesan cheese. So creamy. So this chicken is grilled but then they baked it. Mm. So the outside a little crispy. So it's a beet dressing or let's say like a glaze, right? It's almost like, mm -hmm. it's almost like a paste. Mm. I love a chicken. Add some spice on top right there like that. Please be careful with the chilies here in Ghana. Mm. Rice. Let me get some of that, that beet paste. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think I'm gonna love this though. Vegetable stew. Mmm. Mmm. A little spicy. I'm gonna finish this later, but I wanna show you dessert. So three different types of ice cream. Looks so good. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I haven't had ice cream well, I had some last night, but I haven't had some in a long time in terms of Ghana. You don't really find this all over the street, right? Just, this is a gourmet ice cream. Mmm. I don't know what to put on top of it. It's almost like Pop Rocks. Let's finish this really fast, and let's go see one of the oldest mosques in the world. The Mecca of West Africa. Mmm. Let's go. Hi, we're going to Mognari to do the castle. 
canoe safari on river Mole. And then we come to Larabanga to visit the mosque. Good day, Ben. Hi. Let's do this. How was your day? Amazing. The safari? Oh, so good. See the elephants? So, yeah. How many? Ten. Ooh, bravo. <laughs> uh, the drive from uh, Mole National Park to Mognori village uh, might take about 20 minutes and at least one hour for the visit if you are only visiting the community and if you want a culture performance also it's possible there but we are going for the Kano safari okay we made it this is like a mud village like it's like mud huts right the architecture of this community is completely different from the architecture in southern Ghana. You know, once we made it all the way up here to Mole, it changed completely. These are more, you know, mud buildings. And this is, you know, high grass, right? It's not bamboo, it's high grass. So they decorate this with their hands, you know, when they're doing it. So she decorates it, really beautiful, so different. This reminds me a little bit of some of the communities I saw in Lesotho, down in the sky capital of Africa. You know, that's within South Africa. Very, very similar, amazing spot. This is pretty incredible, guys. This is like a real, true, authentic African experience. A real local community, right? Okay, so from the village, we drove like literally two minutes, made a left, so we entered back into the park. You know, that is the boundary, the, the street, right? So the right, it's the village. On the left, it's the park. And right here, we have the Mole River. Careful the ants. All right, uh, run. So every, any place, just any place. So here we go, Mole River, beautiful. And he was saying that during the rainy season, it gets really high, like it covers most this forest. To the, to the top. To the top of the trees. That's crazy. So you can't even go through here, basically. So please, in the rainy season, when I have client coming here, I don't go with them. Yeah, obviously. Because the I'm, I'm a. Like a stone in the river, or in the water. <laughs> and there's no crocs here. No crocs. No crocs. No. So basically, it's just a peaceful journey through the can through the river, right? Through That's the it. River. So if you want to do the full tour here, it takes one hour. Okay, yeah. so you go 30 minutes to the very end, you turn around, you come back. We turned around 15 minutes in because for me, you know, I already saw a few birds, saw some monkeys. I mean, to see like any other animal would be hard, but if you're a bird lover, this would be awesome. Lots of bird species here, different kingfishers. Uh, what else did we see over there? We saw a few different other birds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big bird expert, so I don't know, but... The bigger bird, that is, which is the uh, plantain eater, western great plantain eater. Okay, western great plantain eater. Yeah. Nice. And that's it. That is the Mole River. Really beautiful out here. It's cool, lots of shade. And you can see lots of like mosquitoes and flies in the water, right? If you want to enjoy the Mole River, come with long trousers. And if you like, put on some repellent, some cream. Uh, to push away Ooh. these flies, especially the cheche flies. They disturb a lot, they are blood suckers. <laughs> Tutsi fly, right? Tutsi fly? Cheche fly. Cheche fly? Cheche fly. Tutsi fly. fly is the worst. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, my man. Thank you're you. Welcome, Thank you. Welcome. And when they suck you, that place. So now we are going back and continue to Larabanga to see the bus. It will take us about 20 minutes. Yeah? Are you ready? I'm ready, let's go. So this is the village of Lalabanga. So it's a real village though. Lots of people here. You know, vendors, houses. The mosque is a bit inside. It's inside? Walking deep through here. Lalabanga, wow. The house is like falling apart. Oh, careful buddy, careful. Hello. Hello. How you doing, good? What's your name? David. Thanks, you. Nice to meet you. Take care. And this, my friends, is one of the oldest mosques in the world. Almost 500 years old. It is gorgeous. I love the colors. So unique, the architecture. So right here is the Larabanga Mosque. It is 600 years old. Located in the Savannah region of Ghana. Uh, it was purposely built by one man called Ibrahim. Islam was introduced into Ghana through the northwest part of the country. This was built with clay and wood. 
The man who built this mosque, Ibrahim, told his friends, hey, when I pass away, please bury me right next to the door of the mosque and a tree will sprout and that tree will have edible leaves. And this is it, a 500 year old baba tree. There's leaves on top, we can eat them if we want. This is one of the most unique mosques I've ever seen. I've been to Hassan II Mosque in Casablanca. I've been to a few different mosques around the world in uh, Delhi, Kuwait, etc. But this is something really, really unique. I've never seen this. I mean, just it's old, you know, 500, 600 years old actually. And look at this. You can actually see the inside in this door. Wow. So they made it really, really short doors, the hallway, and obviously prayer rooms to the left and the right. Before we go back to the lodge to go on the game drive, we're gonna go see the Mystic Stone. We're gonna learn about it all right now. Literally a one minute drive later, we're here at the Mystic Stone. So back in the 1400s, they were building a road and this stone, they moved it, they went back, they moved it again three times. They said, you know, we're leaving it. And what happened is Ibrahim used to come here to pray. And this is where he basically prayed to God and said, wherever I throw this spear, that's where I'll build the mosque. And he threw it and it landed right in the mosque. Pretty amazing. So people come here, you leave some money, you pray. All right guys, that's it for La Labanga. Let's go back to Zaina. Let's get our game drive. Just made it back here to the lodge. And guess what? There's another elephant on the property. Right over here by the rooms. I don't even know if it's worth it going on another game drive at this point. I mean, the elephants are in front of my balcony. This is just too much. I mean, I am blown away. Really amazing experience getting here, seeing one, two, three, right in front, this close. I mean, this is the best part about staying at African Safari Lodges is this experience. Remember, we're in their territory. They can roam around us. You just gotta, you know, stay on the path, Obviously, if it's here, do not walk down there. Try to always stay far away, 50 feet minimum, minimum. Beautiful beast, just incredible. Nothing like seeing an African elephant in the wild. It's like the whole herd is on the property right now. There's three in front of my room, one here. So unfortunately, we didn't go on a game drive because the game came to us. The elephants were all over the property. Easier to stay here and just, you know, admire them, take photos and just relax, right? Mm. So dinner at 5.30. Sorry, I'm so hungry, so I just told him, hey, is it possible to get dinner right now? I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I'm having a pumpkin and potato soup. I'm also having like a Caesar salad and a carrot salad on the side. Really yummy. Mm. Look at this, so good. Mm -hmm. And for dinner, we're having chicken kebabs. Mm-hmm. Onions, chicken, red pepper, green pepper, onions, chicken, all the best. Mm. Today was epic. And today, guys, it's all about the journey. We are traveling to Tamale, the third largest city in Ghana. It's a three-hour drive. Let's say a four-hour drive because of stops. We're gonna stop at a local, you know, village. We're gonna go get some shea butter and probably have some watch it. You know, it's 5:45 now. I'm waiting for Isaac and Ben. As soon as they get here, we jump in the car and we go. Are you excited? Let's go to Tamale. Good morning. Bye, morning. How are you doing? Good, dude. I don't even see you. It's this dark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, Tamale. And when we get to Tamale, instead of them saying, Amaraba. <laughs> Welcome. So we just exited the gate of Mole. And uh, one thing that's really, really good about Zena Lodge is that the gate and the lodge are only about 15 minute drive, right? Not so bad. Some parks in Africa. Once you enter the gate, you still have two or three more hours to go. They're telling me one in Benin, two hours. Once you enter the gate, there's two more hours. That's intense, man. They can't fly you in. <laughs> Woo, it's actually nippy today. Cold out here in Savannah. The African Savannah. Like I gotta say, there's one thing that you have to see when you're in an African, you know, bush lodge. You have to see sunrise, sunset. They're always beautiful. Sometimes the sunset isn't the best because it's a little cloudy. But right now we watched the sunrise and it was epic. Just going up through the trees. Best thing to do is literally walk into the bush and get photos with the trees behind you. But yeah, this is it. 
I love these adventures, man. Hopefully, we see some food. <laughs> watch it! Watch it! Uh, probably your last watch it before uh, you fly back home. I think so, I think so. Yeah. And probably my last food food today. <laughs> We're making another quick stop here at Janikula. This is like a traditional mud hut village. We're gonna walk around. Hopefully, I can try something to eat. But if not, we're just gonna see some local life. Here in Ghana, every village has a chief. So when you get to any of these villages, the first thing to do is to visit the chief, greet him, and then uh, in the north, we say you send cola nut to the chief. That you can go around the community. Oh, beautiful village. Oh. Look at this. Each one, like I guess each family has like five or six huts, right? And then they have like a fence, right? So over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mini huts. Over there another seven. Over here three. Over here six. It really depends. Lots of kids, lots of ducks, uh, lots of chickens everywhere. This is it's real life. This is how the world is for real, guys. Very different. Hey guys, how you doing? Yeah, we are with uh, the chief of the village. Like I said, every village has a chief. And if you want to explore any community, you first pass by the chief. The chief doesn't rule the community alone. He rules the community with the assistance of the elders. Uh, we have the council of elders. And so if there is any issue among husband and wife or two families, they bring all those issues or disputes to the chief. And together, the chief and the council of elders will sit down to solve it and to bring peace among the members. There is no police, so the chief and the elders play the role, the intermediate people among the community members to bring them together. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we met the chief, we met his family. We saw them making some tea, which is their local tea. Some random plant, I've never seen it before. Here we're gonna walk around some more, see if we uh, can try some tea, maybe some porridge. I don't think they're doing fufu at this time in the morning, right? No, too <laughs> early for fufu. <laughs> <laughs> they collect the high grass during the dry season because yeah. during the wet season, the roofs get a little damaged, right? Because of the, how much rain there exactly. is. Exactly. And also, the reason why they use the dry season at this moment to renew or renovate the roofing is that there's no more uh, farming activity. So instead of staying, doing nothing, they take this time to renovate, to work on their buildings. But also here there is a difference between the buildings. Here if you see it with the clay, that's the living room or kitchen. But ones that they are made with uh, the touch, they are um, at a storeroom. That's where they store their harvest, like cassava, yam. Is there anything in here right now? No. No, it's empty. Yeah, it's open. Yeah. So if it's open, it's empty. If it's closed, it's full. Let me see. Can't see anything in there. So in this storage, there is millet. Yeah. But like millet the whole thing. Could be mixed with uh, sorghum. Okay. Yeah. Millet and sorghum. Yeah. I don't even know what sorghum is. They are all of uh, the same. Uh, one is red, one is uh, white. Okay. They even have a uh, Guinea corn also. Okay. Yeah. They mix all together in one. But cassava and yam also in another one. So I'm gonna try the millet porridge. Mm. Okay. It's a little sour. Boom. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you thank Take you, care. You. Take care. That was an awesome visit. We just walked through, saw a few of the locals, so I'm doing daily life, and they didn't really care that I was filming, so they allowed me to film. Obviously, at the end, I gave the lady five, which is one U.S. dollar, so you know she's happy because you know, at the end they start saying, "Hey, money, money," and you know, you have to give them something if you're taking photos. All right, let's continue this road trip. All right, let's go. So we made our left, and now it's 90 straight minutes, and you're in Tamale, third largest city, market tannery and lots of delicious food so at the moment uh, we're in the dry season so you see the the environment is so dry but come here from june all the way to november it's very green 
it's very green. It changes completely. Literally after making that left, going down this road, the environment looks completely different. Over there, it's like African savanna, super dry over here. A little more lush, more green trees, grass. I mean, it just looks like the contrast is like night and day, you know? Very different. And there's not really any villages right now. It's just like empty road. Beautiful, I love it. The tarmac, like the road is perfect. Nothing like Mole Road. <laughs> In Ghana, the biggest river is Volta. But this Volta River, it's made up of three um, other major rivers that come together. We have uh, River Oti flowing from Togo. We have the white Volta from Burkina Faso and the black Volta. So, so partly from Burkina Faso, sometimes make a boundary between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. And it was that uh, black water that they built the B dam recently uh, to generate about 300 megawatts. So these three major rivers coming together to make the Volta River. Ben was saying that Tamale has the watch it specialist. Watch it specialist. Yeah, yeah, really good here. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's gonna be spicy? Yeah, it's going to be spicy as usual. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching. Rice, beans, lots of spice. Here we go, another city. Can't wait to find a hat. And this reminds me of Jamestown. Similar, right? Yeah, it's very similar. This is the old part of uh, Tamale. So old part of Tamale, lots of different alleys, right? Like forever alleys. Obviously here this is paved road, but in there it's not paved. It's just rocks, dirt, vendors, chickens, goats. Wow, this is, this is cool guys. This is real stuff, old town. Tamale has a population of about 950,000 people. Wow. And it's the biggest city in the northern part of Ghana. Uh, it's the main town of the Dagomba people. Dagomba? Dagomba. Yeah. So they speak Dagombas? They speak Dagbani. Yeah. How are you yeah. doing? Good? <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, let's go find some watch it. I'm starving. You? Right. Feeling empty. <laughs> Almost empty. I know yeah. man, it's crazy. So let's go for some spicy watch it here in Tamale. Give me the spice, all the spice. And this is it, walking through the back alleys of the main part of town, old town. It's got some, what is it, some lamb here, some sheep, coconuts. I mean, this is somebody's backyard, basically. This is how it is, right? This is very different, actually, from Jamestown. I mean, it reminded me of Jamestown entering, but some houses are aqua, some are orange, some are blue, different colors. Here we go. This is great, man. This is the real thing, man. I'm in real Africa now. Morning. Hey, how are you, sir? Everything good? Yes. God bless. <laughs> Take care. And this house is like falling apart right here. I mean, solid structure. Getting to the main street now. This is it, the watcher spot. I think we're actually gonna be eating in her like little balcony area. Balcony, what am I saying? Little terrace. So we're gonna eat here. Okay. Nice. Hello, my friend. Watch it. Spicy? Yeah? Spicy, you sure? She just made us some delicious wache, some rice. I don't know what else. I think she had cassava flour, some noodles, and some black pepper, some spicy black pepper sauce. I mean, look at this dish. It looks so flavorful. Oh man, it's like almost like Asian inspired. So cassava flour, noodles, what's the black? That's uh, the pepper. Black pepper, but yeah. there, is there meat in it? No, uh, fish. Fish? Yeah. So fish and there's egg. Wow, hard boiled egg. That's good. Yes, we did it. We got the watch it. <laughs> Best thing to do is mix it all up, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh man. You'll notice the difference is that there's so much beans inside. Sorry, beans? Mm hmm. Mm. So much flavor here. So it is gado, right? Gado? Gadi. Gadi. From the cassava. Mm-hmm. This is the best dish in Ghana, guys. 
spicy. It has um, just a, the, the Asian influence, I guess, because the noodles with the rice. And I like the rice. It's more like, you know, I said it before, but this is like more like arroz con frijoles, very Latin American. This is delicious dish. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Get some of the egg. Mm -hmm. mm. I know tamale is gonna be special. Tamale. Tamale. One of the best rice bowls for my entire life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Get stitch in the. Okay. Oh, yeah. And add meat. And add meat. Yeah, this is the meat. Okay. Mmm. But the, the fish is browned on. Yeah, it's browned. So you basically just. make the stew with it. Let me hold up for Yeah, so no. No, so it has like a, a salty, salty sea taste, right? Like, it tastes like fish, yeah. but just because it's been in the stew. <laughs> There's nothing like eating street food in Ghana. Mm. So every city has its own style of watcha, right? But usually very similar. Always the noodles, the egg as well. Some of them you add like uh, some cabbage and stuff, some vegetables, some onions, some don't. This is so flavorful. I love the textures. For me, breakfast has to be delicious and filling. So this, this beef, can I eat it? Just ah, right. so, so mm. It's like beef turkey. <laughs> My friends, this beef is delicious. It is so different. Hard to explain, but it's a little tougher than beef jerky. But then everything is around it, right? Mm. It's like very tough. Mm. Really bright, so it becomes so hard. It's, it's almost like leather. Oh, it's hard to get through that piece of beef, but... Whoa. Uh, a little smoky as well. Would you give me some more black pepper? Some more sauce? This black sauce, black pepper sauce, it's the best. This is what makes the dish, right? I don't even know how to say this. It's like a little bitter, right? A little bitter gravy. Not sweet, just spicy. Mm. This is the best place. And tomorrow to eat, watch it, right? I'm too focused on this delicious food. You're not gonna finish? No. I'll finish yours, bro. So two of us got the watch it, and it costs us 20 CDs. Get yes. it? Every corner, they have it. Very easy and cheaper. So 20 CDs has four US dollars for three people to eat. A massive plate. Every street is a watcher seller, but visit this one. Tannery is literally right there. Let's go. Wow, here we go. The leather is drying. Yeah. This is amazing. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, Everything yeah, good? Yeah. Awesome. Wow, look at that. So if you guys don't know, this is sheep and goat skin. So this comes from the butcher. Yes. Then they go through an entire process yeah. and eventually it is dried, right? And this is leather right here. Yeah. Look, this guy's doing it right here. So I'm now going to second this. You can see? Remove it. We call it remover of the hair. So he's like soaking it in this water, which is like a remover. It helps remove all the fur. So once it soaks up enough, then he can take it off exactly. all the fur, and then you just have the skin. Exactly. Yeah, change all the color. Soak the skin inside for two days. Then you see, the color is changing. We mix it with water. Our chemical with water. It's a local chemical, which will give us this color, khaki color. We get this color. This is the first color we have. We dry it maybe one, one hour or two, two hours. We apply granite oil. After applying granite oil, we now come to the changing of the skin for the red or black color or white color. This is the chemical for the red color. We pull it like this, into pieces. We pull it into pieces. Yeah, I'm going to change into color for the red color. It's a dyeing for the red color. It's a red dye. See? This is black. Wow. This is brown color. So they got red, brown, and black. Yes. And what is he doing here? He's pounding it or yeah. what is he doing? Stretching. Stretching? Yeah. To make it very soft. 
The process to make leather is a little complex and it takes about a week. Okay, so first they get the skin which they have right here. They let it sit in this like chemical for two days. Then after that, he removes all the fur. Yeah. Then from there, to dyeing. Yeah. Right? So how long does it take to dye? A few days? Uh, uh, one day. One day? Yeah. And then after that, it goes here. After removing, we dry. And then after that, they stretch? They stretch. And then after they let it keep drying? And they keep drying. After drying, and then we sell it. Perfect. How many do you do every day? The, a day we use uh, about 100. 100? Yeah. So they make 100 a day? Yeah. 100 pieces of leather? Yeah, 100 pieces. Nice, man. Yeah. So I'm going to go buy some sandals now. Yeah. Some leather. <laughs> Got to buy. Yeah. Where do you sell to? Local market. To the local Yeah, we sell it to customers. Our customers, most of people from Accra, Kumasi, Takuradi, Kufridwa, Tamale, Bolga, they all came down to Tamale and then they buy. And we make sandals, bags, many things. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're the man. Thank You're the man. man. This is amazing. I've only been to one tannery before. Yeah. In Fez, Morocco. Morocco, yeah. yeah. In Fez. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's, like it's, blew my mind. Yeah, it's blew your mind. Yeah, dude, because it's huge, huge. It's they have like a million of those yes. with all the colors, all the colors, you know. Yeah. So now we are going to the shop to see the various items they made out of these ladies. From shoes, bag. Also belts, no? Also belts, yeah. He's belts making good. The belts He's there. making the belts? Yeah. Look at the belts right here. So here on the main street is his shop. They started pulling out a bunch of sandals. And these are them, right? Beautiful. So they make them all right here? Yeah. Incredible. And they do a kind of recycling. So okay. the, the base of the shoe is made from the old tire, car tires. No way. Yeah, Look at this, guys. So car tiles is the sole, and uh, this area is all leather. Beautiful. I like the mix of colors, too. And it's very traditional here in Tamale, right? Obviously, yeah. because it's made here, everybody wears sandals. And what do they cost? The price 30 CDs. 30 CDs for this? 30 CDs, so what is that? $6, right? It's a good deal. And then they have many different styles, right? Different sizes. Are these all for men, women, yeah, mix? Yeah, this, this, this is all for the men. men. It's for men. I'm gonna try on a pair of sandals. I think it's my size? It looks like it. Yeah, it's your size. It's like exactly my size. It's like men for me. Yeah, it's your size. Look at this. Yeah. Non-negotiable, 30. But it fits perfectly. Yeah. What do you think? It's great, right? Like it had to be for me this one. Okay, I'll take it, but let me see if I can buy another one. I mean, it's, it's good, but it's tight. You think it's good? Yeah, it's very good. All right, so my friends here also brought in some leather wallets. Beautiful. 20 CDs each, huh? They last a long time? I like the black one. This is nice. This coffee one. Coffee one. Brown. Brown. So 20 CDs, so, so four US dollars for a wallet. This is beautiful too, but this is not, this is not. Snake. Is it from Snake? It's from Snake. Is it? Yeah. I was gonna say, it has to be. So the inside is the leather, right? This is from Snake. It's from Snake skin as well. Whoa. So they gave me 10 discount. Okay, so 80 total? Okay, okay, we take it. And put the pumps inside. That's a pillow? Yeah. You lie down on it, or you sit on it, like this, so that it will very fast. What's the cost? How much the cost? One is 80. 80 CDs. 80 CDs? Yeah. 120. One, make it, make it 1240. You know, I give you the discount. Even the other one, to, I, I do this for you. <laughs> I take it, I take it, yeah. I take it. So, so 210, I got three wallets, sandals, and two beautiful, beautiful pillows. Wow, this is wholesale. If you go to the market, he's selling it to the vendor at the market. They're gonna add at least 25 to 50% on top. So buy from him. So here in the north, when the chief is sitting, he has this kind of pillow that he rests his feet on. So that's what he's uh, showing to you. My friend, thank yeah. you, thank you. Good Thanks time. guys, thank you. Two, 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 thank you. You're the man, bro. You're the man. Remember, come to this guy. He has all the best stuff. Thank you. One of my favorite experiences, seeing that. Beautiful. Take care, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the market. We are going to start from Picona Hotel and walk through the central market of Damali to the culture center. Is it big? 
it's big. <laughs> big and busy. It's always big and busy. <laughs> I love it. You cannot compare it with uh, Mokala in Accra or uh, KJTR in Kumasi. Yeah. yeah, obviously, smaller population, right? One million people here. Uh, down in, I think it's 2.2 .2 in Kumasi and 3 million in Accra, right? It slowly gets bigger and bigger. And this is the city. Right in front of us, we have a mosque at the very end. Over here, we have a lot of different vendors. We have food vendors, we have watche, we have seamstresses. So this big city is more of a rural city, okay? You would think you're just in a huge town going through here, but it never ends. It expands and expands and expands. We've driven like four streets and I feel like nothing's changed. It's all the same. Now this part of town is alive. It's like a billion tuk-tuks. This is the city of tuk-tuks. I haven't seen this many in any other city in Ghana. The tuk-tuk remain the, the big taxi uh, or uh, means of transport within the city. And over here is the market? Yeah, it's part of the entire central uh, market. Wow, so many things. They have like farming equipment, they have yams, clothing, and here okay, is Picorna. Picorna restaurant and hotel from here we walk. Uniru Cosmos, yeah. Let's do this. National Vice President, Tour Guys Association of Ghana. I love your hat. I'm getting one. Look at me. I'm boiling. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, okay. Try to navigate through here. Too many tuk tuk people, motorcycles. Oh my god. A few items here, like the snail. Uh, we have the ground hornbill. We have crocodiles. Yeah, so basically uh, animal stuff, right? This is a porcupine, right? Yeah. Very, very wild. Over there, massive snails. Look at this snail. Oh, this is what I ate the other day. Yeah. The same thing, right? Huge. Incredible. Oh man, look at that. So basically he has a lot of wild animals. The snail, the hornbill, porcupine. He also has elephant skin. A little wild. Crocodile skin too. They use it for some uh, rituals. These colors are used for some rituals. Some of them are medicinal. Medicinal, but from a spiritual angle. Because for us, Africa, before we had the orthodox medicine that we have now, when you are sick, they go to a spiritualist. The spiritualist find out what caused your sickness and then what will heal you. So what will cause your sickness, what caused your sickness will be found, just like we do in the orthodox sickness, take you to the lab. Here they also spiritually check up. As you are sick, this is the cause and this is the remedy. So some of the remedies can be found here. This market is spread out all over the place, okay? So it's a little different from the ones that we saw in Kumasi and in Accra. Here, you have the yam section, you have over here some food, over there we have the medicine guy. So it's spread out throughout Tamale. That's where we're going. And this is called the Abuabu markets. We put it to be the new markets. There's the old market ahead, so we pass through that place too as well. But this is the new market, Abuabu markets. Hello, how are you doing? Nah. Here we have some hats, traditional hats. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. The shiny head is covered. Oh, my shiny head's covered? Mm -hmm. Is it cool? <laughs> what do you think? It's a good color? Yeah, it is. It is. You like the but color? Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Let me see the other colors. I don't know. I'm going to try this one on, guys. So it's a little tight. It's not so easy. But you have to like do it over like that, right? I look good? I look good? I don't know. There's so many colors, like even this one's beautiful. So it's traditional here in Tamale, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's traditional. You won't find this anywhere else. I haven't seen any other hats in any other city. Only in Tamale. Let me see. I like them all though. All the colors are beautiful, man. Green, red. This one's like white and blue, right? Really nice. It has a flower. I take it 20? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Yeah, thank you too. Thank you. <laughs> Our next vendor here has basically the same stuff. All medicine. Yes. Wow, look at this. Small crocodile. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Can I grab it? Is it okay if I see it? A crocodile. Whoa. And he has crocodile skins here. What else he have? He has the claw. This is wild. Over here. What is this? From what? Can't see it. A uh, watok. Warhog. Watok. The one you saw at the park. Uh huh. Yeah. The, the so it's the warhog's like tusk, right? So most of the animals that you see here on the stand, some are dead naturally. Before they can pick this part, 
or the other part to use it for rituals or for uh, medicinal purposes. So they're not going out hunting them for this. They just find them as roadkill, basically. And over here we have the tailors, right? These yes, guys yeah. are designers. They are, they are really designers. Uh, they get the strips and then they stitch them exactly. into hats, smokes, cloths, and different, different kinds. For instance, like this. This is smokes. This one, like this, is the oh. is the is the trousers. Okay. You know about history. Yeah. And they also have hats here. They have a few different styles. They have one like mine. Yeah. But they have one like yours too, yeah. Yeah. which is like a short hat. Mm -hmm. And then he's sewing, right? He's sewing all together. He's doing that. It's a short hat. Oh wow, he's doing it right there. By hand. Yeah, by hand. By hand. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Every single shop here has hats, right? They all have beautiful hats. Wow. Look at this one. And this one goes over your whole head, this right? One is, uh, yeah, this one is yeah, similar. Yeah, so it's like that. Okay, so this is a style, huh? Yeah. This is like the style that's not going out of style. No, no, no. <laughs> this market's very different from the one at Accra and Kumasi. It's way more spread out, but now it's become more congested, right? Over here to the right and the left, we have a lot of different beans, a lot of fruits. So we have millet as well, we have beans, we have rice. All local rice. All local rice. Palm kernel and oranges. They are all not produced here. They've been brought from the south. Well, the kennel, that one, we've seen them make the butter. That's that. right. Yes. Yeah. A chicken market is where people come to shop for chicken, guinea fowl, uh, turkey, ducks, and so on. And it's a huge market for the people. See the guinea fowl? We've eaten some before. We've eaten the guinea fowl. Yeah, I've tried it. That's right. This is the crap. So a guinea fowl is a type of bird from the wild. It's, uh, you were saying it's sweet and it's gamey. This is a chicken coop. If you want to transport a live chicken, you put it here. Okay, so walking through here, there's more chicken, more guinea fowl, and there's turkeys over here. Oh, a massive turkey. So many guinea fowl. I mean, I've never seen this many guinea fowl at a market before. I'm guessing there's a lot in the area, right? Plenty. Are we gonna eat that today with fufu? Guinea fowl and fufu? Probably. Too many guinea fowl. Look at this. And they're really scared. They're not like chickens. Chickens stay here. Ducks stay here. Guinea fowl fly. Oh, I need to cover my nose. Smells. So many. Poultry everywhere. My friend. Hey. All right, guys. I'm gonna try some papaya. Right? Good. It's one CD each. So for a dollar, you get five of these, right? So you basically get an entire, entire papaya. Let's try it. Very crunchy. Yeah, I think it's not ripe yet. I think it's just like right there, about to be ripe. Usually it's soft when I eat it. It's a little hard. Mm -hmm. People are everywhere, whoa, they're sewing right in front of us. Mm -hmm. Just left the market. More guinea fowl being boiled. What an insane array of smells, flavors. So we're going now is the meat market, where they slaughter uh, sheep, goats, cow, and then they sell the meat. That's where we're going now. <laughs> this is the butcher shop. We got 10 butchers, and every second some new client comes in and orders something. They have beef. I think they have lamb and goat as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so you order, they cut it up for you. Just be careful. When he's cutting, things are flying in the air. And I love the sound. <laughs> yeah, watch out. It, hits you, it can hit you in the eye. But I love the sound. The smells a little intense. Obviously, it's rotting carcasses here. You got legs, the ribs of the beef. You have over here uh, intestines. And the guy just keeps hacking down. This is one of the places that is kept a bit neat compared to some other which we have visited in some markets. It's pretty clean. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty clean. Let's continue. This market is unique, very different. Yeah, yeah. Very different from Kumasi. Yeah. Kumasi, you can't even walk. Mm -hmm. This, a lot less people. I like this. Less people, yeah. less crowds. Yeah. Plus, in COVID times, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of beans. This entire alley is beans. Just vendor after vendor, they're cleaning the beans. Again, we're ready to go out to the market for sale, right? Because right here is not the actual market. This is like wholesale, and then it'll be out to the vendors. And it's another unique shop. So this is the shea butter shop. And here they have shea butter. So you just grab a little bit, put on your skin, right? Right there. Moisturizer. Feels good. Very nice, my friends. So I thought this was a shea butter, and that was it. No, every single one of these is shea butter. Look at this. So they have it in these plastic bags. They also have it wrapped over here. 
So much shea butter. Can I take a box? I mean, a whole thing? This is so unique. Never seen this before in my life. Shea butter factory here. They're packing it. He's packing it very uniquely. I mean, the bottom, is that the, so that's the calabash. So the bottom of the, the bowl is a calabash bowl with all the shea butter. And then he packs it like, I don't even know how he packed that, but he did a unique job there. Yeah, I mean, you need to learn this. <laughs> yeah, it's several a, days lots of skill here. Study. I mean, he's probably been doing this for like 30 yeah. years, you know? Whew, all right, let's continue. She's a great woman. She she sells. She's one of the great women. Doing a shepherd. She's the funny. So same thing. Shea butter. Here. Yeah, shea butter. Shea butter. This one of the shops, and she's telling telling me that I should let you know that that is her business since childhood. She learned it from her grandma to her mom, now to her and now her daughters and everybody is there doing. It. And she's the shop owner here, and the whole shop is nothing but shea butter business. So you can turn back to her. She's the one selling shell butter here in Tamale. Come to her. She's really pushing her business. She's buying some? Yes. How much? He's spending 30 CDs, so like six US dollars, for a huge ball of shea butter. That's incredible. Dude, that's huge. Let me see. My auntie in Accra, she has been really worrying me anytime I'm going to the north. I say bring shea nut butter cream from the north. I cannot believe the price. You spent 30, right? Oh, it weighs so much. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Here there's like seven women pounding a fufu. Look at this. So here the ladies are making fufu. There's six ladies at one time pounding the fufu. And over here they have the modern version, which is basically just putting it into a machine and it comes out, right? They're also making a bunch of different soups. Over here's a light soup. This one has like a bunch of different organs, different things in it. What is it? Whoa. What's in there? Looks like tripe, like stomach, intestines. Looks really good. And I thought it was only one area. No, no, it's, it's like, it's never ending. Yeah, it's how many? It's just never ending pots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody doing the same thing though, right? Yes. Similar stew. Yes. And they're making the fufu. Over there, they're, you know, cutting up some chicken. The guinea fowl stew. Mm. Yeah. That would be so gamey. <laughs> but why not, right? We're here. They eat guinea fowl here, right? Okay, so we saw how they make their traditional food, which is not like fufu, food. it's a little different. It's made from corn. That's what they were doing there. They also had fufu on the side and they were pounding fufu. They always have both, right? It's fufu and then whatever they have in, you know, the city, the state. Here they do one with corn. Let's keep going this way. Dude, there was way too much smoke in there. I couldn't see. Yeah, smoke, you right? Too much, too yeah, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Traffic jam. Yeah, traffic, traffic jam, yeah. <laughs> you eh? I know Gwanda. So this lady, she's a fruit vendor. A lot of pineapples, a lot of calabas, right? So this is it right here. Wow. Uh, I've never seen soap this big. Bah, okay, that's I know, but they bar. haven't cut it. Yes, it's so it huge. Soap. Bar soap. So it has the lines to be cut, but I've never seen it like that in its original lines. form. So we're back at the street, and I guess we're done. We're walking back to the hotel, Picorna, and there's our driver, Ben. And from here, we're gonna go to a warm place and then we're gonna go eat some fufu. He's the best guide ever. Tamala, you you oh. like you taught me so much. My man, my yes, man. Yes, thank man. you, yes, thank you. It's almost 1 p.m. and the crowds have come out. Before it was pretty dead. Now everybody's out walking the streets. It's packed. It takes time to start life and activities here. It's also not so hot in comparison to anywhere we work. Kumasi was boiling compared to this, and it's not that dry. It's not so bad. Tamale Cultural Center, where they have the, the art galleries, the art shops, where visitors come for shopping. We came here to find a few things. It's my last day of shopping, and this is it. Lots of vendors. So Sylvia here has a mix of things, right? She has baskets, wood carvings. She has the map of Africa, the map of Ghana. Which they used to make dresses like this. Yeah. And women also make the similar thing, but a bit longer. And then bracelets, you know, small little hippos. This is cool. Hippos, elephants, lions. So lots of wood carvings, but they also have baskets and they have leather work. Obviously we're in a city of the tannery, so lots of leather wallets. What I was looking for was a, a beer opener. She has this one, 
which is like wood with the opener on top, but I, I saw one with brass that I was really interested in. Lots of good stuff here, my friend. This is too much. I would buy your whole shop, but I have no way to take it home. <laughs> oh, look for a big car. A big car? Yeah. I need a big plane. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Too. Thank you. Yeah. So this is the shop. Adongo Artworks. Every shop is very similar, but some have different products. No way, you found it. And here they are, guys. So these are beer openers. I like these, but I don't really understand what it is. So it's like a turtle and a croc or something. <laughs> this one's cool. How much, my friend, for this one? 35. 20. 100. Okay. 100? Yeah, sure. I'm buying four bronze beer bottle openers. Really cool designs. His cousin makes it. He charges usually 35, but I'm buying four for 100. Nice deal. Thank you for negotiating. And I'm done with the cultural center. It's a great place to go shopping. They have a lot of leather stuff. They have baskets, wood carvings, those bronze beer bottles I just opened. And now we're going right here to find some fufu. Another fufu. Yeah. My last one. No, maybe tomorrow you will get another Maybe, food. maybe. <laughs> so Isaac, is all tamale like this? Is every single house is just one story? Because I don't see any like two or three story buildings. No, no. Um, this is the, I mean the heart of the town. But if you move to the outskirts, you begin to see those uh, story buildings spreading up. Um, no, it's, in fact, tamale is the most fastest growing city now in Ghana. No way. Yeah. So there's also like a CBD area, right? With yeah. towers and stuff? Yeah. Okay. And the so it's just the old town where we are now. The real, the heart of the city, the beating heart, right? Yeah. Right here. So we're about five minutes away from the airport. We stopped at this gas station to get some fuel. And right here, there's a chop bar. Let's see if they have fufu. If not, they might have some rice, some bitters. Oh, they have fufu. Yes, that's big. I guess it's good. I guess it's good. That okay. Means how much? Thank you. It's a lot. Look at this. Fufu with uh, peanut soup and chicken. Right here, got the peanut sauce with some chicken. Like that, right? Yeah. Just pour it all in. And the chicken. So, what I got chicken thigh and a drumstick, right? And I asked me to get it on this trip. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, the peanut sauce. Mm. Oh, it's like delicious, man. It's, it's sweet, it's oily. Mm. Nothing better than the peanut. It's got to drench this. Mm -hmm. And right here, piece of chicken, right? Peanut also goes well with, um, with rice ball. With the rice ball? Yeah, because yeah, it absorbs it, right? Nice piece of chicken. Still really hot. The peanut soup is yeah. boiling. You gotta be careful. Ooh, too hot. The only way you can actually touch it is if you get the fufu like this and you just drench it. And this one is not different, right? It's the same as the ones we had before. In terms of corn, cassava. They explain to my viewers what fufu is. Fufu is pounded yam or pounded cassava mixed with plantain because mm -hmm. we have different type of food okay. one from the yam as one from cassava mixed with plantain or even mixed with cocoa yam okay you boil the yam first then you pound it in a mortar or you boil the cassava uh, cocoa yam plantain together and then you uh, you pound it in a mortar okay that's what we call food. and it goes with any soup Every soup, tomato basically. soup, peanut soup, pamela soup, mm -hmm. light soup, everything. And this one's delicious. I mean, it's so different, right? It's different. It's peanut soup is a um, specialty of the northern people. Yeah? yeah. And guys, if they give you too much, tell them to give you less. They give him like double <laughs> the portion. <laughs> peanut sauce. Oh man. Sweet, oily. I just I enjoy peanut sauce so much. Ooh. You like uh, mixing it? I love mixing it. <laughs> Just like I take off a piece of chicken. Uh, it's still super hot though. It's like burning my hand. Chicken. Got a little bit of poo poo. Get some of that delicious peanut sauce. Sorry I say delicious so much is that there's no other better way to describe the sauce. Because we want to. Mm. We don't want you to, to go with the plain empty uh, stomach. No way, man. No way.